Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Sorry, I had a push to talk on from Among Us the other night. Oh yeah, no worries at all. Uh, let me just get all, make sure I got all your ats and stuff on here. All right, and you're at on Twitter. Let me grab that real quick. Do you have a Twitch channel? Um, yeah, it's the same. It's Merrick Deville. Okay, Merrick Deville. Okay, good. Nice consistency. I I I did not have the uh, the perfect consistency, and it has proven to be a headache at times. <laughs> So, I like your Kingdom Hearts thing. Oh, uh, thank you. Same, I've got mine in the other room. That same sort of like pull down like that. Oh yeah, the wall scrolls. I I need to yeah. get. I I'm I'm gonna be upgrading my backdrop here eventually. Um, but but yeah, I I I'm a little bit bad at that sort of thing. So, um, for now I just have my like ten year ten plus year old wall scroll of Kingdom Hearts that I love because I love Kingdom Hearts. So. Yeah, I do too. I was uh I was a little disappointed with the third one. Yeah. Um, I didn't end up playing through it because I just felt like they made it so, so corny. That it was like <laughs> it, it wasn't like the games that I grew up playing. You know, it, yeah. it felt really different. It's always it been like a little corny, but like for sure hard. they definitely have gone off. And I didn't play the third one either. I played the first and second one and uh, Chain of Memories and was really into it. And I just I couldn't really get into the third one. I do want to play it at some point, but I just haven't really gotten into it. it. Yeah, it's just like a big Disney ad the whole time. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, like more so than the first two. For sure. I mean, there was always a bit of that. I mean, you don't you don't partner with Disney without a, signing on for a whole bunch of merchandising and advertising and, and whatever. But it's definitely gotten a lot worse. And Disney, of course, even since the first game came out, has absolutely exploded. I mean, they're like what, like thirty percent, I think, of the entire film industry now. Absolutely wild. So yeah. Yeah. Um, this is on your Twitch channel, right? Uh, this is on my YouTube channel or my website. Um, the I don't stream on Twitch really anymore, especially after the TOS, which we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, TOS changes today. Oof. But uh, okay. yeah. Um, so uh, if you it's would like a link, uh, demonmama.com yeah. is the easiest one. Everything is there. You can go from demonmama.com and you'll be able to see my YouTube, my Discord, everything. You can, yeah, have it up or whatever you'd like. I've got your Twitter and your Twitch on. Was there any other links you wanted me to have up on the screen for you? Actually, don't do my Twitch. Do my YouTube. Then. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Do you have um, a me... Do you have a YouTube yeah. like uh okay? Is it YouTube? Link... Is it forward slash C Merrick Deville or? Um, I don't. I don't think so. Actually, that actually would have been. Uh, well, that consistency that you were talking yeah. about. <laughs> well, see, YouTube is mean in that they don't let you have your own custom link until you reach partner. So if you just have a chunky link, you can just send it to me, and I'll uh, I'll pop it into chat so that we can um, we can plug that one. Oh man, my last video is is from my sexual mutual aid drama. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> That's the first thing they're gonna see. That's okay. Um, we're gonna talk about all that. Don't worry. Like, listen. So. I don't know. I know we've only talked a few times, but just so you know, my whole thing is uh, I, I'm pretty I, I'm a spicy bitch when it comes to debate. But with everything else, I really do my absolute best to, to dive in, to be really fucking cool and, and charitable to people. And I do this segment called Drama Mama um, and they're called Drama Mama Investigations. And the Drama Mama Investigations is I go dig into a drama. I figure out what everybody's pissed about, why they say they're pissed. And then we try to get to the bottom of it. And I've done a couple of these. Uh, some of them are uh, more inflammatory than others. Recently, I did one on Xander Hall. Um, oh, yeah. And, yeah, it was from just the other day. I f had a great time with that one. I've done one on um, Destiny and, and Peter Coffin, um, which has been an interesting thing. There's been a whole bunch of drama mamas. Basically, whenever there's internet drama, I try to do a drama mama on it in the moment to try and figure it out and maybe diffuse if there's like bad blood happening the whole the hope is to find a way to like make it make sense so that people don't get just like caught up in the anger and whatever unless there's something really worth because some drama isn't actually drama at the end of the day some drama is legit but most of the time it's just a lot of people really it's angry stupid. about shit yeah. yeah um did you have oh yeah okay you sent it here let me just grab yeah, that I see real quick. um here we go boop, boop. Perfect. I will paste this in chat and we can boop. All right, everybody. My bot, my website bot is busted at the moment. So 
your channel is just called Merrick Deville, right? Um, on YouTube, besides the link. I think it's uh, Merrick for America, but I'm gonna change it to Merrick Deville. In, okay. Actually. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's fine. Um, I have the link. Uh, hey, um, uh, I'm gonna keep this link on on hand, mods. But mods, if you wouldn't mind posting this link every once in a while, since the bot is down, that would be incredible. Oh yeah, we also did a Mike from PA drama mama investigation recently. Um, after mm -hmm. his uh big fight with uh with uh, Ico. Um, I don't know anything about that. There you go. Well, there's a video out there for you. <laughs> Um, okay. It's the, uh, the, the drama mama on on I think actually wait maybe that one isn't I think that one's actually on the wait list to go up I ha I'm a little behind on my editing right now, um, but yeah uh, there's some fun anyway so that's kind of the stuff that I do um, I talk a lot of politics I do do a lot of debates I do a lot of panels um, previously I was um, you know pr a, a pretty common face in the Twitch politics debate scene um, but. Uh, you know that's slowed down a lot these days because there's just less panel shows and but I'm still on there relatively frequently, but again I'm that's that's my... kind of my thing. So okay, that's cool. I'm I, I'm I might have to hit you up for tips about that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This. I mean, we could talk about a ton that. of stuff today too. So yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm absolutely. doing my first debate on Friday. Oh really? So. Okay. Yes. What are you uh, What are you going on for? Um, the kid who I'm talking to is like actually a child. He's like a Zoomer. Um, oh, he's, okay. He's like Porn. so he's talking about why he thinks only fans shouldn't exist uh oh so yeah wait I'm do you, gonna who's go hosting it do you know uh dylan oh burns. dylan burns okay cool yeah. are you debating yeah. endernax yes oh boy okay is this gonna be bad i don't know anything about him okay um what? All right, we'll talk about it next. Listen, uh, okay. oh boy, oh boy, have fun with that. All right, yeah. yeah I, listen, keep listen, freaking out about this. Uh, if if you if you're if you are, are are happy with the way this conversation goes, maybe we can have another off stream conversation, and I can talk to you a little bit about it. I've okay. had a, a number of conversations with Endernax. Um, in fact, um, we we recently had a very good conversation. In fact, um, and um. That was a that was a really pleasant conversation. I think Endernax is good at heart. I disagree very strongly with him on certain um, issues, porn being one of them. Um, and uh, but he's very bombastic, so I'm sure you'll have a very good time. Um, my one my, <laughs> my primary piece of advice is uh, don't be afraid to to uh, to to flex a little bit. Okay, don't be afraid to put yourself out there because uh, he's he's very he's very showy. He's very bombastic. And if you give... oh, like tell him to shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, just 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 push in a little bit and and make yourself a, have a presence. That's, I mean, again, I could I could coach people on on debate. I've probably done more Twitch panel debates than basically anybody on the platform besides the actual hosts themselves. I've been on so many. I was on like the first, like I think I was on the second episode of the show you're going on now, the Hippy Dippy podcast um i was on like the second show ever of that i was on one of the earliest prime kai's shows so a lot of those panels were you know where i got my start to be fair um weren't and, you yeah. like, like a week ago like or like you were two two shows ago it was you right um yeah i was on um shit fuck uh yeah i was uh i did a showdown um which is a new thing against redneck um you might recall that okay. being the the super transphobic guy who i um genuinely embarrassed there was a point in the conversation where i said listen redneck i'm going to give you some genuine 100 percent personal advice you should exit the call and turn off your camera and get off stream right now because what you're doing right now is going to ruin your life you are saying things that are, will make you toxic to every single person in the future um and it's true it has as it turns out if you go on live a live show with thousands of people watching and spew obscenities um, hate slurs, say things like, um, trans women are just men in dresses. Um, yeah, as it turns out, you become impossible to work with and nobody will work with you because you're <laughs> horrifically toxic. So yeah, um, yeah. that's the, the tier of stuff that, um, that, that I was dealing with. Uh, that was the last engagement I will ever have with this redneck person. I think he's a malignant toad. Um, very, very so rare sorry. that that happens. Oh no, it's fine. Um, I knew what I was getting into going into it. Um, like literally... Um, it's like, okay, like, 
uh, it's very much uh, on that front. It was not. I was not surprised at all. I was very clear of what of who I was going up against, of what I would be encountering, and what my goal was with that. And I think that that uh, I think I accomplished it, which was to demonstrate that uh, there are certain types of people on the internet who are so rooted in hate that they literally cannot see any reason whatsoever. Um, and those people, um, those people simply cannot be um, treated as though they're like a rational actor. Those people are going to utilize any platform they can to spew hate, and they're going to make by proxy um, their the spaces that they're in toxic. And so my main goal was to show that, and then to reach out to trans people in the audience and let them know that people like him are not representative of reality they're not re representative of what most people think that he is actually an exception to the rule who is making these spaces very toxic but nonetheless has opposition and i think i succeeded in that goal um and i definitely got to have some fun um i mean it, it's been weird we'll, we can get into that a little more if we want to once we get onto the topic of like sort of the public sphere and how people go with twitter and and the boundaries that people tr truly do not have and don't understand and, and whatever. Um, puppy. What a cutie. Oh my God. Come up here. Come here. We're, 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 we love the pups on this channel. Oh my goodness. Baby. She's being weird. Hold on. That's okay. Don't be weird. Puppy. Puppy. Come here. Come here. What Hi. Hi. What's their name? This is Ren. Hi, Ren. Hi. Oh my God. Oh, my chat is spamming my dog's my dog's emote. My dog has a custom emote in my chat. Uh, oh. Yeah, my dog Yoda. Um, okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay, we're done. Maybe at the end I'll bring Yoda on and and show you her her secret talent, which is um she's a uh, very skilled opera singer, as it turns out. Okay. Um, cool. you know. <laughs> All right. So before we get too far into it and too far off track, um, why don't you, uh, if you're willing, introduce yourself to my audience, uh, what you're all about, what you, uh, you know, what your sort of basic story is and how you found yourself in this, in this space. Okay. Um, I am a small YouTube creator. Um, <clears throat> I am, um, relatively new to leftist thought and leftist spaces. Um, I identify as being an anarchist. Um, and I suppose I have become rather infamous on Twitter. <laughs> so I am here in this space to talk about uh, that, I guess. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, we can talk about whatever you're comfortable with, but I, I'm certainly, I think uh, one thing I was really interested in, what sort of prompted me seeking you out for this conversation was, you know, we, we had that panel together, which went away, went a direction. Um, and it was an interesting <laughs> one. Um, but I really was interested in hearing more about what you had to say. So I wanted to and explain and hear your experience and... and um, one of the things I'm very interested in is understanding, um, the spaces that I'm connected to the spaces that we operate in online and how we can make them better, more effective, et cetera. I am, uh, I really don't want to, I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm like building some kind of giant political project because I'm not, I'm just doing a show, but nonetheless, I'm very interested in what we need to do to make spaces better, if anything. And uh, so I figured, well, if you've had a rough experience on Twitter and clashing with certain sections of the left online, well, I would love to hear what happened and see if we can get to the, you know, get to the bottom of it and hear your experience and understand and whatnot. Because um, it does seem like you have quite a lot of anti-fans, something I'm familiar with as well. Um, I have a lot of, and this happened very quickly for me as well, not even to the same degree, like the same degree as you. I can't even imagine. I think you said you went from like 300 to 30,000 um i'm i had a hundred followers at mm -hmm. the beginning of august okay. and then by the time the middle of september rolled around i had thirty thousand. wow holy yeah. shit that is like um terrifying growth um yeah i imagine it's also kind of a, a little probably a little bit exciting in some ways but also probably terrifying at first yeah i had no idea what had happened um do you because... know what, what prompted it I, I think it was no comrades under 1k. Oh, okay. When the hashtag went around. Um, and then 
I saw the photo of Savvy with uh, where, you know, she has the, the photo with the AR. Which, you know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not, not 100% familiar. But the tell gun girl I said us to. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with this particular tweet, actually. Um, it, is there? If anybody in chat has a link to this, I would love to uh, look at it for those who aren't familiar. So she, yeah, she's a sleepy socialist on Twitter. She was she basically posed in front of the uh, communist flag with an AR, and she was saying like to Caitlyn Bennett, you oh, know, okay. yeah. We have guns as well and i thought that was really cool because i had just started to get into um guns also we had nice. just built the my first ar nice. when okay. that happened yeah so i saw that and i was like oh that's really really fucking cool um and i was you know i was just dipping my feet into to leftist ideas and leftist spaces and and i really like the idea of guns not being just for right-wing shitty chuds yeah i um, like that also, as well yes yeah, and, and also for women. So, um, and I've always thought Caitlin Bennett was just the dumbest person in the world. So I was like, this is super cool. Like, yeah, so much cool stuff is happening here. And um, I quote tweeted her with a picture of me with my guns. And that went, that went well. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Savvy and I started, we, you know, started talking back and forth a little bit. And then, um, you know, I made a post with the two of our pictures together because at one point I, I think this was after I had started to read uh, uh, anarchist literature in my underwear. Cause that had been like the thing that I was doing with my YouTube channels. I was like, okay, well, here's the deal. People respond really, really, really well to salacious things. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah. It, fair. It 100%. just does. It just and, and, you know, using aesthetics is something that the right is very, very good at. Um, and they've been able to to turn that in their favor. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been a sex worker for a long time, and I've done online sex work for a long time. So I was like, this is perfect. This is a meeting of things I'm already doing and things that I'm interested in. So I, I posted pictures of us together, and I made this, like, goofy little, like meme thing that wasn't you know supposed to be taken seriously i just thought it was cute i thought it was silly um and it was like something about like oh like it's nice outside and we're reading literature to you and we're in yeah. our underwear like just <laughs> stupid right? like it's supposed to be stupid yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and just you know cutesy and dumb and people lost their minds over that like a lot of people were really really mad about it but a lot of people were like this is fucking ridiculous i love this and so well, it great. just went from there okay. um and i just started seeing this insane exponential growth um which was crazy for me too because this is the sort of like ridiculous shit posting i've been doing on instagram and uh facebook for years yeah and i, I think i'm at like sixteen thousand on instagram and i'm at like ten thousand on facebook and that's been years and years and years that i've been building up into these numbers so for that to just explode overnight on twitter i was like completely blown away by that and it shit. wasn't something now, now i have an area i gotta talk to you about because it sounds like you've got you've got the 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 attention grabbing uh ability the marketing ability that's like ooh, that's like damn that's better than i could ever hope for hope for that's awesome <laughs> as fuck um so yeah so okay i mean that sounds like so far i'm just like this is this is based as shit you know what i mean that's my response sounds pretty great but as i understand it things have um there's been a lot of negative feedback as well uh was it largely at first was it largely like conservatives who were mad at you like they were getting owned they're like fuck this like oh the commies got guns too or, or what was it what happened or, or was it mostly positive for that first for that first uh interaction well the initial few photos of me mm -hmm. <clears throat> that i got a lot of shit on it was conservatives okay um, initially like those were the people quote tweeting me being like oh under communism you'd be starving you wouldn't have tits that big you know okay. all that all all the, the meme the communism titty meme. Uh, yes i forgot about that i i forgot um stalin's first act upon uh taking over was to outlaw large titty yes it yeah. was to shrink all big tits yeah, yeah. Um, forcible but... tit shrinking oh shit now we're getting into the kink category oh boy all right back up reverse reverse <laughs> Well, I, I think it's hilarious. I think it's so great when people say that to me because I'm like, oh, you're just telling me you can't tell they're fake. So thank you so much. You're just telling me I bought an amazing rack from a great surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, 
but so you know like I, I don't get mad about shit like that i think that's really funny and like i don't care what conservatives say at all yeah, i don't yeah. respect they're them i don't take stupid seriously. as fuck yeah they're dumb yeah, yeah. um so you know it's a lot of i'm gonna throw you out of a helicopter and ah, i was yeah. like <laughs> classic classic taking me on these romantic rides yet oh <laughs> guys yeah. and so you know i was really like um kind of flippant lackadaisical about it at first and then i started to realize that a lot of the hate that was starting to get directed at me was from people who i was like oh these are communists like it started it started to move in that direction the more followers i got and people would start to say, like, try to dig through all of my tweets on that account from, like, the months prior when I was still really involved in, um, like, a liberal mindset because I didn't even know what a leftist was. And they would try to, like, tweet old liberal tweets at me. And I was like, why is this happening? This is very weird. Like, very weird, passive, words, antagonistic things like that started to happen. And I was like, man, this is very strange. And then it started to be like these meme accounts, these huge big number accounts would tweet my photos with like vomit emojis. And I'd be like, these are like leftist meme pages. Like, what is this? And it would, they would just be talking about like what a thought I am or whatever. And I was like, this is weird. And then um, I had someone from, I think, Iraq, I want to say. Okay. Someone from the Middle East quote tweeted me, mm-hmm. and it was the first time a tweet about me has ever gone viral, and it was basically just like these dumb fucking white leftist bitches, like, you know, just talking shit about um, the communist girlfriend thing, like, they think leftism is only an aesthetic, they're so fucking stupid, just like all this shit, and I was like, oh, ooh, and so that tweet hit like 8,000 likes, shit. and I was like, That's a oh, lot shit. of attention, holy fuck. Well, so this started the first, like, couple, like, first two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just started happening a lot after that, where, like, I would post something and I'd be like, POV, I'm your girlfriend and it's time to read Kropotkin. You know, just, like, being annoying. Like, being cute. It's memeing. I don't feel like, like, I don't feel like that's that annoying. Like, I I don't see, I guess I don't understand what people would get mad about about that. But that's me. I Um, have a very different approach. But fair told was that um i am making a mockery of the global south and that i am making a mockery of communism Mm -hmm. um by not taking it super seriously and that i'm making it only an aesthetic and that i'm just kind of an idiot who doesn't like believe anything i'm saying or that you know and and, you know all all the like grifter accusations started around then too where i was like man i'm just trying to have some fucking fun like I don't understand. My first impressions was, was I was like, man, there's a lot of anti-fun people. Like, that's yeah. why they seemed like they were getting mad at me that I wasn't, like, uh, I don't want to say that I wasn't miserable enough. But, yeah. Like, that yeah, was kind of, of the that, yeah. I mean, I, I will say, like, something that I've noticed is there are definitely pockets of the internet that are um, very much... Um, I would say fixated on the things that they dislike to the degree that they no longer know what they like or what is good anymore. Like they only know what they hate and they've almost been consumed by hate. And sometimes I think that that makes it impossible for them to engage with nuance at all. If they think, if they see something that doesn't fit their worldview perfectly, well, it's something I hate because there's no mid middle ground there anymore. You know what I mean? Or there's no, room for like hey uh maybe there's celebratory things that we can talk about like maybe we can we can meme about how in a in a you know post-capitalist society we would have better sex or something like that like this is something i've seen like like i mean so goddamn much and and i I mean again it does seem to be very much in my experience directed towards women mostly um interestingly in these spaces this sort of like oh like uh, if you're having fun, if you're if you're doing something that I don't judge as like uh, I don't know ideologically pure enough, then it's because you know you're a thought or you're a whatever. Like you're a fucking you know not taking this seriously. You're just like trying to s- sell yourself or something along. That. It's it's really ridiculous. I feel like they call every like there's a certain faction of people on the internet that will call anyone a grifter, and it loses all meaning. 
Um, this is actually something my, my latest drama mama was about, this accusation of being a grifter. Like, well, what's a fucking grifter? Okay, well, here's your accusation of a grifter. Does the things that you're saying actually line up with this person being a grifter? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. I think at this point, grifter is just anybody I don't like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and what dishonesty around it too like there's um there's a tweet that keeps resurf like keeps surfacing everywhere of um me saying to somebody um yeah you can go ahead and spread that tweet but all you're doing is spreading my porn for me um and people have used that as evidence that i'm a grifter but what they don't show you is that the tweet i'm responding to is an indian nationalist talking about what a disgusting white whore i am um and how i'm fucking filthy and he's responding to photos of me saying and they've been quote tweeting them and sharing them so what i do when men are doing weird stuff with my porn men who i don't know the intentions of yeah. men who i don't know whenever they're starting to do anything with images of me yeah. or links to my porn i'll always be like that's fine go ahead and do that you're just making me money yeah. because it shuts the conversation down and it shuts down whatever it is they're gonna do i don't know if i because if i let that go um how how many people till it gets to someone who decides they want to rip my entire catalog and start spamming it at people who follow me? How right. many people does it get to before someone decides that, oh, they live in Texas and they're fucking crazy and they decide that they want to kill me because they yeah, don't like right. me? Those are Hopefully never. See, right? Hopefully it will never get to that. You know, oh, well, I mean, but this but... is the stuff that I have to worry about. And like, I think a lot of people 100%. like talk a lot of shit and, and, and don't take me uh really seriously because they don't understand that there are like actual legitimate dangers to my safety with doing porn especially at this visibility yeah. um and so i get a lot of lot of like shit talk to about that but so so you know my go-to and and i would say like even if you don't agree if you know the situation i'm talking about you don't agree with what i did or if you're a girl or a sex worker and you don't like me and you don't agree with me do that I would say try it because it fucking works every time. Like if guys are harassing you, just be like, yeah, go ahead. Please do that. You're putting money in my pocket. Yeah. Um, and then it, you know, it fucking works. So that got screenshotted and like, that's been used against me. Um, and that's been used as evidence that I'm a grifter. So I just think at this point, like grifter just means anybody that I don't like. Yeah. And I, f I tend to feel the same. I mean, um, my comments page right now on YouTube has been, for the last like two weeks more or less just endless accusations of me being a derivative clone grifter who just is trying to you know i don't know uh, squeeze my way into internet spaces for clout sharking and i'm like i'm a streamer i go on a camera and people t talk to me and i talk about what what do you fuck do you mean like what are you talking about and i don't know like i feel like some people like they, they think that, like, if you do anything, if you're doing anything and you also happen to be a woman, um, then, oh, you must be, it's like this, it's this, like, like misogynistic stereotype of, like, oh, it's the conniving woman. Like, she's, it's an ulterior motive. And it's like, well, wait a minute. This is my jo job. Yeah, I started streaming and I asked people for, to support me because I want to keep doing the work. You believe in these things. You believe in the fair compensation of labor. What the fuck are you talking about? And it's just like, I don't know. Like, sometimes, I swear to God, it's just this, like, deeply ingrained misogyny that's just, like, l lurking under the surface, even in some lefty space, even in a lot of lefty spaces. It's just like, oh, a woman's succeeding? No, it must be because she's secretly seducing the well-meaning comrades of the movement. And I'm just like... Okay. There's a ton of misogyny. I'm I'm kind of shocked at the level of misogyny, actually. Um, and it, it's also a lot of like whorephobia with me too. Yep. Uh, and that's the thing that I've realized that, and and we can maybe get into this a little bit later. But there are girls who do exactly what I do, mm -hmm. um, who get treated very, 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 very different because they don't talk about it the way I do, mm -hmm. and they're not open about it. Um, and I've noticed that, you know, there's very different experiences. And I've definitely been told by people, hey, if you want to be taken seriously, you need to stop posting photos like whatever. Um, yeah. And these are people who, you know, have 40, 50,000 person followings who consider themselves socialists, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> really fucking terrible. And uh, this is something I've encountered as well. This is something I've talked about before. Um, that like just uh, just because people have shifted to the left politically, you know, on an economic level, doesn't necessarily mean that they've um, uh, doesn't mean that they've actually like 
come to a full understanding that I would consider of like what I consider leftism. And also this is why I choose to, to at least for my purposes, um, generally when people ask me, what does leftism mean to you? Well, to me, it means an anti-capitalist analysis combined with an intersectional analysis of oppression. And that's what determines leftism for me. Because to me, a society that manages to sort of successfully, um, and again, big asterisk on there, but successfully, like, I don't know, democratize the um, the workplace, but, uh, or, or, or decommodify or whatever, but, but, but women aren't allowed to be citizens, but black people aren't allowed to exist there. That is no point. It's no fucking point for me. There's no, no win has no gain has been made. That's not an egalitarian society. That's just a, it's just an ethno state or, or it's just a, a patriarchal state that, that locks people out based on their intrinsic identity. So I think it's incredibly important to me, um, for a leftist movement to be both intersectional and have a meaningful critique of capital. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what your thoughts are on that, but I imagine we probably are somewhat in agreement on that. No, yeah, I, I completely agree. Because it was like, like someone asked me, um, I think yesterday, they were like, are Nazbols leftists? And, you know, before I even, before I could even form like a, a coherent thought about it, my gut reaction was like, no, absolutely no. not. Yeah, I would say no as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't consider, um, I don't consider uh, like... Um, I don't consider Nazbol's leftists. I don't consider like, um, like, um, like the class reductionist as a whole. I made a pretty, pretty solid argument, or I believe it's a pretty solid argument. Um, I made a, a pretty hefty case for why I don't believe that class reductionists are meaningfully leftists or should be considered leftists. Um, I've made a number of similar arguments like that. Um, and a lot of that I will admit comes from my experience being a trans woman. Um, and seeing how um, movements that don't attempt to educate along intersectional lines, movements that don't bring attention and deliberately um, put forward the value of, of minorities within their own groups, um, like how those movements become easily co-opted and fail and ultimately produce societies that are as bad, if not worse, than the one that we live in now. Um, yeah, uh, some people would say I would consider there's probably some people who some would describe as tankies. I don't know. I've been rethinking my use of that term lately, but I don't know yet. Um, but what? yeah, the like hardline, um, like dictatorial Stalinist -y types, um, I would consider it not to be really meaningfully left, um, because usually they don't, um, there, this is something I've noticed. Um, there's a lot of, um, Marxist Leninists specifically, and this is not, you know, this is just my observation as not being a Marxist Leninist who are also traditionalists. And to me, I'm like, um, that seems kind of counterproductive. Uh, it seems Wait, kind of weird to that? what's that like a, tra a tra traditionalist or. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, when I mean like a traditionalist, I mean like they believe in like, um, like having a society that's like that roots out like social degeneracy, like homosexuality would not be supported. Um, oh. you know, polyamory would not be supported. Sex work is not supported. Um, like they believe there's a, there's this one account. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's a pretty big account and they regularly post like, um, quote unquote Soviet art. And they always post art of just like man, man woman and children families. And like, it's this very specific lens of like, uh, home and they'll say things like, "Oh, homosexuality is a distraction from the class issues. It's a it's a bourgeois decadence." And like, I'm not kidding you. This is a real thing. Um, this is something that comes up. I, a lot of people don't know this because, like, you know, like, you know, trans issues are admittedly pretty niche. But one thing that comes up all the time is that there's like this faction of class reductionists online who um they don't always say it exactly like this, but they are they essentially argue that um. Much like how you get the comments of like, oh, you wouldn't have those those tits under um, under socialism. Same thing goes for me. Oh, you shouldn't you wouldn't have those because it's like a, it's a bourgeois decadence to be able to afford uh, hormone therapy for trans people because they're not. You, know, you see what I mean? Do you see where the logic oh, their logic is going? Yeah, we're not like, socialists unless we live like human raccoons. Yeah, that, that, I mean, yeah, okay, right. yeah. Um, I mean, that's kind of their that's that's sort of like the 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 the. That's the way that I would joke about it. But if I'm trying to steel man their position, basically, they believe very strongly um, in a... Uh, I love all your animals, man. A society that needs to be regimented and traditionalist in order to maintain the, like, 
the worker power and you need to everything needs to be subservient to the like the goal of advancing communism and that means we don't have room for families that can't have you know hardy working kids and who don't have a strong man who can guide them it's ridiculous i but it's surprisingly it's common i mean it does i agree so scary. i agree that's why i would say that's why i argue that people like that like like uh Marxist Leninist traditionalists, I don't believe, uh, are should be considered leftist allies. I don't think that it makes any sense to do so. Um, so yeah, um, that's sort of the some of the stuff. And it sounds like it sounds like you've encountered some of that. I I find this to be another another faction. Um, another big problem is that same faction of people also tends to be obviously very anti-sex work, which um, I think is a ridiculous position, um, and um, is hardly justifiable without dipping into bullshit nazi degeneracy social cohesion nonsense that they make up about how if you expend your sperm you'll lose the energy to fight for the glorious revolution or whatever and i just don't i don't fuck with no that shit. yeah yeah no fap, yeah but i mean it, it exists i've i've encountered this you know what i mean like i've encountered this fuck like i mean there's even prominent figures who who push forward this sort of thing I mean, I find it really frustrating. Um, and yeah, so it's it's one of those things where, it, you know, I, 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 I wish people would take them to task. I mean, I think some people do, but I wish people would take them to task a little more. And also, this is a conversation I've had with some Marxist Leninists. I'm like, I wish you guys would uh, would push those people out of your movements a little more frequently because um, they're like, I, I can't imagine, um, you know, stalking like someone who ident like the, the twitter posts of somebody who identifies as like a sock dem or something like that for for a post that you find objectionable but then being willing to just overlook like this person who's like in your community pushing traditionalism and like a like literally patriarchy i don't know do, do am i out of left field by saying that's kind of like a fucked like double standard no, 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 it's okay to bully people out of spaces and then freak out when they actually leave, but it's also good to have bigots in your spaces. Yeah, there you that's go. Like, that's like, the fucking law. It like, is. It's very flawed in my opinion. Uh, there is, I don't know. Uh, and this is something that, like, I guess this touches on, like, some, um, some of the concerns I have. I mean, specifically about Twitter. Um... I think I mentioned this um, when, when on the panel that we were on. I have a code for Twitter. It's called the Imps Code. I, don't know I read your code you to read someone. Either, I read it to someone else. I taught it to them. I took notes on your code. Yes. Amazing. The Imps yeah. Code has uh, been an incredible, incredible, uh, like, I, again, I designed it as like a manual for myself. Because I have ADHD, it's always nice for me to have notes things to remind me when I get really heated in the moment to go, okay, wait a second. Okay, no, I have my code. All right, let me go check the manual. All right, here we go. Like kind of that whole idea of like, you got to know the rules before you can break them. And Twitter obviously doesn't give a shit. They just want to make money off of ads. So they don't care if there's like social malaise all over their site and it's a miserable place to be. Um, I mean, they off of it. They actually benefit from it. Of course. It. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's not just that they're neutral. It's they want it. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I always tell people the first thing you should know about Twitter is it's an ad platform. They don't fucking care about you socializing. That's like a, a side uh, a side effect. You know what I mean? Like, that's a benefit that they can they can keep you hooked on the site. But they just care about serving you ads. They care about generating engaging, con engaging content, which is often very negative. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But yeah, the, the, the reason why I even, like, came up with this was because I just saw what some people might refer to as as lefty infighting some people might refer to it as some form of cancel culture but there's a whole bunch of terms for these different things but basically i saw a bunch of people that i like and care about and follow constantly getting into the most maddening arguments you can possibly imagine and ending up destroying relationships um sometimes like completely burning bridges with people over um what uh, sitting from the outside it looks like uh, a fight of people throwing post-it notes over a wall at each other like with this the threads are breaking because that's what happens you know what i mean like um you know you twitter doesn't have like threading so people don't even know what they're replying to anymore they half remember a tweet from before it's a mess a horrible mess and so i was like all right we got to come up with a better way to do this and so i've been trying to push people that my code into people's faces so maybe like that'll start to improve the general space that i'm in but i do think there's some like other bigger issues that you know the code can't necessarily deal with 
for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think there's this permissiveness to attack and be vicious to people if they've been deemed uh, bad Mm -hmm. or if they've been deemed uh, dumb, I guess. So, you know, when I, when I was first, um, when I was first gaining followers and I was, I was first getting acquainted with left Twitter, it was just this sort of like background chatter of people being really upset about the sex work stuff. And Mm -hmm. a lot of, um, nobody really had anything to straight up attack me for that they wouldn't get pushback for. Mm -hmm. But um, the first time something big really happened and I got accused of something bad, I saw multiple posts of people being like, actually being like, yes, I've been waiting for this. Finally, I'm so fucking glad. Like people being like, um, you know, you couldn't say anything about her before because people would accuse you of being a swerve, but now we have proof that she's this or that or whatever. Yeah. So like I saw a bunch of people being like, it's the day. (laughs) It looked like, whoa, who are you? I saw a lot of those. And so I I think there's a lot of people who are um, really unhappy. And, you know, I I definitely also think that the left draws in a lot of people who um, are not middle class, are not upper middle class, people who are struggling and people who have a lot of stress and who have a lot of of problems that, you know, through no fault of their own, they have to contend with. And and so there are going to be a lot of people who are struggling and suffering. And we also don't necessarily live in a society that um, values or actively implements emotional toolkits for people. So I think that I am seen as um, an acceptable target to take out a lot of personal issues on. Yeah, the essentialization um, process where it's like right, right, you and, and get so, boiled down into not being a person, but instead being representative of like an idea right. that they don't like. Right. I basically wear a scarlet letter. Mm-hmm. So um, I think a lot of people are, it's it's an emotional release for them mm-hmm. to just kind of uh, treat me like a punching bag, essentially. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. I think there's definitely some of that, like for sure. Um, like quite a lot of that, I would say. I think that um, there's a lot of people online who are kind of just always lurking, um, trying to find that justification to vent hate. They're very, very angry. And like, I mean, of course, like like a lot of the times I will just refer this to fucking internet haters or, or fucking anti-stands, which is like an experience I'm completely new to. I have never once in my life had somebody who devotedly hates me. I've got like mm-hmm. five now people who just fucking hate me for why? They don't even know who I am. They saw one video of me and I was being uh spicy to their you know debate daddy uh i know you might be friends with him in real life destiny but uh, a lot of the destiny fans really don't like me um well destiny acts like a shithead all okay i will say i'm probably gonna get shit for this and i i've been warned not to say this but like yeah yeah, i am friends with steven um i am friends with that's fine. But uh, I also know that he acts like a shithead all the time. So I, I, get, I get it. Like, he does stuff that I'm just like, oh, why are you doing this? Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, we can we can talk about my engagement with uh, old Socrates Steve. Um, it was not, I mean, it was very, it was very, very um, aggressive. It was very, very mean. We were incredibly mean to one another. I had a great time with the actual debate. Um <laughs> It's funny. Like, the thing is, like, I, I'm, like, okay, like, I'm a pit fighter. I tell people this all the time. Like, I, I don't really go looking for fights most of the time. But if somebody wants to fight me, like, it's like, I, I love banter. I think it's great. And I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. You know what I mean? Like, if, if somebody's gonna throw shit at me, I'm gonna throw shade right back. And I'm gonna have a good time. So I did have a good time. That was the most fun I had. And I think... I think Destiny had a good time, too, because he was laughing a lot during the conversation, which, you know, whatever. But I will say that he kind of poisoned the interaction right straight from the get-go, and I did come in hot, but whatever. The fallout... What's that? Right? We didn't even put my name up. They didn't put my name up, didn't put my face up on the can- on the screen. Um, he, he put... Uh, when he invited me on his show, um, I, I, was, I wasn't streaming that day, so I got on stream just to start, and I went and saw his stream before I started mine. And his stream was titled uh, uh, "Cod with with somebody," and then it was like, and then it was like uh, talking, probably talking with a crazy person from Twitter. 
and then that was his thing and so of course being that i'm not going to like just take that lying down especially given that that's the <laughs> subject matter we were arguing about on twitter um uh i uh I, I put my stream title when I launched my title as debating fallen Titan and pseudo gamer gator, uh, Steven oh. Benelli. And I was like, um, and so, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I just fucked it up. I was just fucking around. I was like really pissed at that point. Cause I'm like, all right, I see how you're going to do this. I see what you're going to do. And so he had me on, didn't have my camera up, didn't do anything. Um, and, um, and, uh, and then his fans, holy fuck for the last week and a half, I've gotten like literally hundreds and hundreds of comments. I had two like hate threads about me about how, um, God, I posted one on my Twitter that made a lot of people mad. I screenshotted one from, um, from the, uh, I, I screenshotted one from the, uh, from the destiny subreddit that was like, ah, it was somebody. Who, and they said, they were like, oh, I just know this stupid dumb fuck is going to have a hundred K subs by the end of next year. It pisses me off. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, baby, I am. You know, the sort of like, go ahead, keep hating. You're only making me richer. You know, that sort of thing. Like, and then of course like, oh, see, it's proof that she's a grifter. It's like, no, I just don't, you're literally helping me. I am a streamer and you are giving me attention, obviously. And so it's like, you know, whatever. So like some of it, I just kind of like have fun with and dunk on these people. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some big issues with like fan bases and people being weirdly parasocial. Again, some of it's just haters. People are mad because, you know, I debated with their guy or whatever and, uh, you know, made him look like a fool because he was being a little bit of a fool, but whatever, you know, we don't have to go there. Um, but you know, there's also the types of people who will go through and um, comment on any positive comment that anyone left on your video arguing with the people. Like I had a guy who on the video that I did, like literally hundreds of comments from one guy arguing with every single individual who had anything positive to say about me, talking about how I'm a dumb bitch. I'm disgusting. Ton of transphobia, a lot of shit like that. A lot of people just coming in and being like, uh, you're, you're a man and you know it and all this shit like that. You should, I got like three different people, um, before I even went on stream who messaged me that I should kill myself, stuff like that. Um, and it's like, wow, there's some really fucked shit going on here. And, um, it really weirds me out when this stuff is prevalent. And I think it's going to be present almost anywhere, right? Like I think to a certain degree, if you have a lot of eyes on you, there's always going to be some like really unhealthy, really unhinged people hanging about. But when there's a lot of it, I start to wonder, okay, so what's going on here that's promoting this? What's going on here that's allowing this to grow to the same degree, you know? And this was one of the things that my debate with Destiny was actually about, my debate, my, my argument with Destiny was actually about, was about, like, um, he claims, he makes jokes all the time about being the last SJW of being, like, a, a social justice guy. But then he's perfectly fine with blowing up random people and his and his fan base comes in and they are not the last SJW. They come in saying some real shitty stuff. So we had that whole debate. And um, I do think that this is a problem with multiple, not just with a single creator, but there's a lot of spaces that foster this. And I do actually think that there are on the left some spaces that um, foster this pretty fucking bad. Um, I've seen, um, like, again, obviously you've seen way more of this, so you can, you know, chime in with whatever but i've seen people reacting to some of your like i mean i saw this one in the wild um the one that the comment of the person who was just like you know it's really hard to reading theory it's just easier to be dumb you know and like which had like a lot of interact i think you retweeted that recently but like i saw that in the wild like before i even saw you retweet it i'm just like the fuck like is this As even fellow, based on reality? Here, like, right, you do shit about theory all the time, and people get mad at you point, for that. It's just like, what the fuck? Years, like, so high well, mood. this was something that I said, too. I was Thank like, you, uh, I was like, uh, you know, <sighs> when I was reading Marx and Goldman and Kropotkin, mm. you guys were fucking livid. You were furious. Mm. And then when I stop doing that, because you guys have made me so depressed that I don't even get out of bed anymore. And so now I'm like talking to the only people that I know of currently on the internet, on Twitter, who are not going to be like scary to me. Yeah. Be like mulling over that. And oh, I'm absolutely. Like, 
insane. This person's like, this dumb bitch isn't reading theory. And I'm like, I'm like, I could link you to my YouTube, but I don't want you guys to go bombard me over there. So yeah, they don't care. Like they, they don't care. They don't care about that. I mean, this is also the same person that was like, oh, she's a sock dem now because she's doing the, the left was too mean to me, so now she's moving to the right, and she never b believed anything that she said, and she's abandoning all of her beliefs, and I was just like, that's it. You know what? I, I'm just I'm just dumb. I can't even read. Theory was too fucking hard. No one taught me how to read. I'm just a sock dem now. Like, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I, there's, there's no with these people because, like, it doesn't matter what I say. Um, they'll just keep shifting the goalposts or they'll find something else to get mad at me about. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's one of the things I think, uh, I think part of the reason why, uh, I think part of the reason why I've generated a lot of heat is that, uh, I don't tolerate a lot of people's bullshit very much. So like if somebody comes in, like telling me to, um, read theory or whatever, I'll be like, fuck you. You don't know what I've read or not read. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like wh who the fuck are you? What are you fucking five follower Andy? Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like I'll be, I'll be. I'll, if somebody comes in like guns blazing in bad faith, I'm just gonna give it right back to them, um, or ignore them completely. Um, but it's like, I have to ignore because if I just gave it back to everyone who did it to me, I would just be Twitter fighting all day, yeah. and also people would see stuff and it would get quote tweeted eighty thousand times, mm -hmm. and everyone would be like, oh look what a horrible cunt she is. Like it's, it just it's just better to ignore it for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I agree. And that's like, again, that's sort of part and parcel with my imps code is like, don't do discourse. You never, never, uh, spend time talking in good faith with people who aren't in good faith, especially on Twitter. And if there is somebody in good faith, well, talk to them elsewhere, talk to them off Twitter. You know what I mean? Um, and I've had that, you know, you know, I've had that happen like so many times. Like literally, I can think of multiple times where people tried to bait me into discourse and I just DM'd them instantly on Twitter, on Discord, deflated the situation instantly, which would have otherwise turned into some kind of new drama cycle. Um, the drama cycles are just so stupid. And and this most recent one, I've discovered that there are a lot of people who more or less, um, you know, um, they, they more or less have a bunch of people that they don't like and they wait for that person to seemingly to be even not even like sometimes not even plausibly but like somewhere in the plausible in the plausible region of like fucking up or making a slip up and then they try to blow that up it's very like cancely um but it's also really pathetic and like it, it seems to me to be largely a product of like i don't know like a like grudge holding and and like jealousy in a lot of cases it's like oh this person has a lot of attention and i don't and therefore they're the problem with everything yeah it's kind of like i mean some people say it's clout sharking but usually clout sharking is like when you're trying to get yourself up in the process i don't know if necessarily all these people are i mean maybe um i do think there's some problems with um very specific um segments of like um there's like well, okay, I'll just be honest. There's certain segments of ML Twitter, especially, um, where they're very insular and they all tend to swarm the same targets because if one one popular figure has a problem with that, then all of the others will come in and sort of um, swarm around and they're like this, 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 and then they never let it go because it's like, I don't really get it. I don't, and that I don't get. And I don't understand what is winning from that. Like, even if you are in a... Again, even if you are and you buy into sort of the Marxist Leninist ideology and whatever, which, you know, I don't necessarily, but I think there's some value to be withdrawn from it. Um, it, it it's weird to me that like the approach is to engage with such toxicity that it just like shuts people down. And I think sometimes it comes out of like, I, I know you mentioned getting fed jacketed. Like that's something that seems to be really willing. Uh, people seem really willing to engage in that. And like, uh, I've made like very offhand jokes of like, oh man, if there's ever been a CIA op, this has got to be the one. But like, I'll never like, I I've never, to my knowledge, like literally accused somebody of being CIA or blown that up to like a retweet or, or tried to put that out. I feel like that's a very dangerous thing to do. Um, but so yeah, that's something that's happened to me. Um, it's like it's like a meme at this point. I mean, well, I mean, it is a meme at this point mm -hmm. that I'm I'm fed. Um, it was even in my bio for a little bit where I was like, yeah, I'm a CIA honeypot. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking open that shit, you know, because I just yeah. think it's so fucking ridiculous. But um, after the situation in Louisville, it reached this, hey, Aww. hey, hush. After the situation, in, <laughs> she's so unhappy. Um, 
they they both want to be in my lap. Uh, after the situation in Louisville, it just reached this like fever pitch because we were stuck in this church for uh, till like three a.m. Um, the last night we were there, and the FBI and the cops were outside. Holy shit! And at, at any moment, the information that we had was that at any moment they were going to come in the church and arrest all of us. Because do you want to um, fill some... up in the chat? A lot of my chat's not familiar with this particular thing. If you want to fill them in on what happened, because it sounds so, pretty interesting. So before, okay. So I went to this. This is where all the drama started to um, really like get get a foothold and and, and get going. Was I um, went to the ice facility protest in georgia okay. do you guys remember when that information came out that they were um yes, covered they that. were giving hysterectomies mm -hmm. <clears throat> right remember so this. so i'm sick for like half the year i'm sick i'm bedridden and when i'm not sick i like to try and make the most of everything i want to get out there i want to do stuff and this happened right around the time that i was like starting to feel better and so um, it's part of, you know, part of my condition is that in the fall and the spring, I, I feel okay. Yeah. So this was in September and I was, I was starting to feel okay again. And I was in communication with Erica, the white trash socialist, which I'm sure you'll have seen. Um, I'm actually not familiar with her. But people in your chat will know. People in chat probably uh, yep. And she had been at Kenosha where uh, Kyle when Kyle Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse sh shot, um, yeah, she treated Gage actually. So she is a combat army medic. Damn. And I had, um, I had really, really, I had a lot of respect for her. And she was going to these places, to these hot spots, and she was working as a medic. And now I have um, some certifications. I've gone to, like, Stop the Bleed classes. I've taken, like, basic first aid courses, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and so I was like, I want to learn more about this. And, and, and you know, I, I, I want to be, I want to be helpful. And, and um, I want to basically be an asset to people. Yeah, yeah. So, so the plan was that she was going to go protest at the ICE facility in Georgia. So I was like, okay, I, I have the ability to bail myself out if something happens. Mm -hmm. I'm white. Um, I'm a, I'm a girl. Like, I, I have these things going where I'm probably not going to get the shit beat out of me, and I'm probably not going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. So bodies like mine are helpful in the front lines, right? Yeah, So we absolutely. should put people in spaces. Like, like I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we don't put the most vulnerable people out in the front. I think that's really stupid. Yeah. So I was like, I really want to go, and I want to do something, and I just want to do something good. And um, I'd had like this explosive month on Twitter and I'd had this explosive month on OnlyFans because of it. So um, I was like, I, I, I tried to buy Erica um, a bulletproof vest at some point and she was like, oh, I don't need it. Um, you know, it's fine, whatever. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna go with you. So I booked a ticket. I flew into Savannah and she came to get me. And then we drove from Savannah to wherever, bumfuck wherever, Georgia, where this facility yeah. was. So we, um, I got a lot of shit for that. People were furious with me for that. For what? And uh, What were they mad about? Um, going into a community that I don't live in. And for um, uh, flying on a plane during COVID. Because I, I had already had COVID. So I had okay. the antibody. Like, I, I was wearing a mask. I was social distancing. I was doing everything that I was supposed to be doing. But they were just, people were furious with me, right? Um, Meanwhile. Like, so, mean, no, I yeah, won't make so, any so, comments. So, yes, go ahead. So, so all people were freaking out on me. And, and I remember um, when, I was, when I was flying there, someone was, like, flipping out because I hadn't responded to a tweet thread about Vosh. They were, like, demanding that I answer something about Vosh. <laughs> Um, and I was like, hey, my dude, like, I, like, sent him a selfie. I was like, hey, man, I'm on a fucking airplane, like, about to take off. Can I get back to you? Because they were blowing my Twitter, blowing my shit up. And I was like, can I have a break? Yeah. <laughs> I'm traveling, my guy. Yeah. And um, someone took that photo, and they were like, this is really fucking weird. 
who 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 flies who, who flies into a protest and i was like okay well that's a good point but like hold on like just hear me out this plane ticket was like 150 dollars yeah like the plane it, tickets are nothing right now exactly it was like nothing i was like look 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 um it was so much cheaper to fly than it would have been for me to drive my Hyundai that falls apart like every fucking 400 miles or whatever, you know? It's just <laughs> like, absurd to me that you would ever have yeah. to explain yourself to this degree. Oh, I have to explain yeah. every single little thing I do. Every single little thing I do is under um, an immense amount of scrutiny. So, um, so you know, and people were like, like zooming in on my picture and like making fun of my fingernails and like making fun of my makeup and like just all kinds of hateful shit. Wait, give me one second. It's okay. okay. Take your time. No worries. It's all right. I'm going to hit the restroom while you do that. Chat. I'll be right back. I'm going to hit the restroom. I'll be right back. I'm watching you. Don't go anywhere. Double chair. Oh no. Hey, I've returned. I'm back, everyone. I don't. I don't. Uh, chat is asking if you can see it. If you can see us, but site chat wants you to, to to see them. They've been saying nice things to you this entire time. I should have oh, told you on. earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, site chat's on uh, demonmama.com forward slash live. That's where you can find the site chat. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So so um, I was uh, I was. I landed in, in, in Louisville or where did I land? Um, I landed in Georgia and, uh, I realized that this tweet about this guy being like, why are you flying was blowing up. Right. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, Oh God. Um, so, so that was kind of like this, this, this issue. And then, um, the, the thing in Georgia was only like a day. Like I thought it was going to be a while that we were there. Yeah. And, uh, it was only like a day. And so uh, afterwards, or maybe it was the next day, I think it was afterwards, mm -hmm. um, there was a Black Panther, like a new Black Panther Party rally um, in another city in Georgia, okay. like multiple hours after this protest. So me, Erica, and then uh, one of the organizers for the ICE facility protest, we all went down to that one. Well, by the time we got there, it was over and um, I went to go find a bathroom or whatever and uh i took a now infamous photo okay. <laughs> in a bathroom in a restaurant in this bumfuck small town georgia and um i posted it on twitter and i said sorry fash i only fuck leftists okay. and this was a reference to um an altercation that had happened between me and a they call themselves like um the benny hill something some oh, some wait group. i think i know what you're talking about is that the the wagoner 
Ben Wagoner or something? No, they're like, um, I can't, I can't remember what they call themselves, but it was, um, there was an off duty ice agent at the ice facility okay. and he had a bunch of his like chud bros showed up to the protest a with a fuck Merrick ton of guns and they were like harassing him. Or a narco, yeah, there, there's a video of this that went, it was my first viral tweet actually. And, uh, it got like, like a quarter of a million views. Um, he was like, they were like, like yelling slurs at the people who were protesting, at like the indigenous people who were protesting. And so Erica and I went and like put ourselves in between this like crew of chuds and these, these kids, because these were young kids who were protesting, yeah. right? Yeah. So Erica and I put ourselves in, in, in between them and we were just kind of like talking shit back to them. And, and, um, one of the guys was like talking some shit to Erica and Erica's a veteran. And, um, I, I said something to him. Oh, you know what? I was just talking shit to him. I was like, you yeah. guys are dumb. You're all the fucking same. I bet I could guess your politics right fucking now. Like yeah, I can yeah. read you the book. And he was like, no, you can't. And I was like, yeah, I can. You're, you probably think that you're a libertarian. You come and you do this with your buddies. You probably consider yourself a libertarian, but really you're just a dumbass right wing, like authoritarian chud. And he just kind of stops. Yeah. And then... And then I'm, I like laugh, right? And I walk right. away and as I'm walking away, you can hear him on video going, well, you're hot though. And I was like, <laughs> you dumbest fucking what you chose to say to me? What? So it, was this, it was so fucking ridiculous. So it was yeah. this ridiculous clip, right? And I was like, that's yeah. incredible. That's going on Twitter right now. So good. Um, because I'm a big believer that um, one, of the, one of the key components to handling fascists is to embarrass them. Thank yep. You. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I've i actually read some stuff from people who, who study this who are like, don't let them know that you think they're scary. Don't make them feel like they have power. They thrive off of that. Mm -hmm. Make them feel small. Make them feel insignificant. Mock them. Because you also don't want other people to to give them power in their minds too, right? So, the, so this is a line of thinking that I, I, I really adhere to and that I, I strongly believe in. So um, I posted that clip because I was like, oh, that's fucking golden material. Like, that's so good. Um, and then later on, when we were in this other town, in this other small town, like Bumpuck, Georgia, I posted that, like, sexy photo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sorry, Fash, I only fuck leftists. Because I'm referring to what had happened right. in the clip prior, just talking a little bit of shit. Um, and I, I also thought at the time that it's very important because this is something that people have really hated me for okay. um not very modest but i don't have a problem uh weaponizing my aesthetic i yeah. i think it's actually uh, an effective tool i know that i'm you know as a as a woman i'm not supposed to go uh i know i'm attractive i'm not supposed to say that um people hate it when you do that they get really shitty to they you get really shitty uh, yes yeah yeah so absolutely so when, when i Hey guys, like, sorry, Fash, I only fuck leftists. You know, like, I'm, I'm like playing with the idea that I know that, like, I got these big fake fucking titties. I got these big fake fucking lips. Like, I didn't get fake cheeks for nothing. You know, like, like, I've obviously curtailed my appearance to try to be mainstream attractive, right? So that's something that I think that um, is appropriate to weaponize. And um, it's, re it's reclamative. It's, it's a reclamatory, I guess, is the right word, or something along those lines, what? where it's like a wearing, wearing something as your armor. It, it is, but um, they also care about identity politics. As much as they say they don't, they care so yes, fucking much. Yep. Um, and to see a woman that they would consider, you know, a white woman that they would consider typically attractive to be mocking them, and also a sex worker at that, to be publicly embarrassing them and talking down to them, mm -hmm. I was like, that's also, like, it's important to put things like this out. Um, and for people to see this, for other people to see them being undermined by someone who most people consider to be a lower class member of society and to be doing it shamelessly too. Like, I, I think things like that are very effective tools. And so, you know, I, I posted these two things and uh, people were furious, absolutely fucking livid with me because um, it was turned into... Um, I, I guess it was turned into like, I don't 
care about um, black and brown people. Um, it was turned into like I'm. I, I I don't know like like a bunch of of I guess black and brown people said that they felt that um, I wasn't being respectful of the situation um, because of what was happening in the ice facility, and I f feel bad now, um, but I I felt like I was doing what I was doing with a purpose. Um, and, and, you know, I, I had been tweeting about what was going on at the ICE facility, like, I had been talking about it, and, you know, I'd been letting people know what was, what was happening, what was going on, like, I thought it would be okay to do those two other tweets, like, I, I feel like you can do multiple things at once, right? Yeah, That's I mean, the for the record, just so you know, um, I think not only are you 100% in the right, but those people who would take an, take issue with you, uh, and, and feel the right to sort of, um like fill you in with their their unwanted critique like i i wholeheartedly believe in, in ignoring that type of person like um and and like not only that but i like ignore them with prejudice like it's like 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 if there's people who are going to come in and just meaninglessly waste my time um saying something like oh you can't take a selfie that's like pushing forward the idea because there's some weird abstract version where i say that this is like disrespectful to me who wasn't even at the event over my you know analyzing this over Twitter. it's just like literally fuck the fuck off like i don't have time for people's armchair str strategizing you know what i mean like it's so fucking annoying to me and i think well, there's a lot of people who have like this sense of entitlement where they're like oh you post things in public therefore I should be taken seriously in anything I say to you because it's in public. And they use that as like a shield. You know, it's like, oh, well, you posted this publicly. Well, sure, you can commentate on it. And I also can say it's what you said was stupid or ignore it. And it's like, it's almost like they don't want you to be able to ignore a critique that's t clearly in like bad faith. Well, I've been told that I'm not an anti-racist because of situations like this. Um, okay. and that I'm like, a, a, like a borderline racist because of things like this. So, you know, I, I, I do want to be considerate of people's feelings. Um, I have felt that some of the things that people have said to me have been, um, if not disingenuous, um, maybe looking at my actions through the worst possible interpretation, the worst yeah. possible lens. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, so I, I, you know, I, I had posted those things and, and I felt like I had, I had paid attention to the issue. And then, you know, I had also posted these things and, um, around this time, this is when Savvy, who, I don't know, she's sleepy socialist on Twitter. I don't know if you. Oh yeah. I saw the tweet here. I have it. Uh, someone sent it to me. So I've got it up. So, I've got it up here now. Uh, so it was around this time that, um, she had un unfollowed me on Twitter and, or no, something. Um, it was a little bit after that we were, we were leaving. So, so we were going to leave Georgia yeah, and we were going to go to Louisville because they were going to announce the charges for Breonna Taylor's killers okay. in, in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that the thing in Georgia was going to be multiple days, but it was one day. So um, when Erica told me that she was going to go to Louisville, she made it seem like she had been invited to Louisville. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, you know, do you think it's going to be bad there? Like, do you think they're going to need help? And she was like, well, yeah, I mean, they're putting out a call for people to come help. So I was like, okay, well, can I come with you? I, I, I want to still help. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Let me just go with you. And, and she was going to be providing me on the ground training. Um, to, I was supposed to help her with any medical issues that were going to come up. Cause like I said, I have, you know, some certifications and, and this was something that I, I wanted to learn. So I was like, Hey, can I, can I help you? And she was like, yeah, it's actually good for medics to have one person who's more experienced and one person who's less experienced. Um, th that's typically how pairings go. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. So, um, <clears throat> she told me, she was like, Hey, we need to get chest seals. So I don't know. Are you familiar with what chest seals are? I'm not, no. Educated. So a chest a chest 
is for a puncture wound or a gunshot mm -hmm. in the chest. So um, your chest has, I, I believe it's negative pressure in your mm -hmm. chest. So if you have a, a puncture wound, you're not going to be able to breathe mm -hmm. because of the, the pressure differential from right. inside the chest mm -hmm. outside. So what the, the seal does is it literally just seals over the wound so that your patient isn't like suffocating okay. to death. Yep, that makes sense to me. Yep. Right. So, um, so she was like, chest seals are really expensive. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just throw my cash app up. And I was like, okay, well, you're driving. Um, I'll go ahead. I'll put your Venmo or her Venmo and, and my cash app up. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. So, you know, I, I posted up and, um, I was like, Hey guys, you know, we need, we need just a little bit of money. We're making our way over to level. And, uh, immediately savvy pops on to my Twitter and she was like, I don't think there's any violence in Louisville. So why would you need money or something like that? And I was like, she pops onto my tweet and she does this publicly. And I was like, what is she doing? Because she had been in Kenosha with Erica. Okay. That's Erica and Savvy knew each other. So she'd been in Kenosha with Erica. And Erica was like, I don't know what she's doing. This is weird. She did the same thing in Kenosha. Savvy literally put up her money apps in Kenosha and people gave her money. Okay. So she's like, I don't, I don't understand why she's doing this. And I was like, well, hey, um, you know, people were responding and they were like, yeah, it's the a state of emergency had already been declared, I think. Mm. It was pretty uh, intense there, as I understand it. Yeah. It, it. It was. It was. Like, the National Guard was rolling in. Um, you know, it was It was a big deal. Like, we, they were expecting it to be kind of a fucking mess. So people were like, hey, Savvy, like, this is what's going to happen. And she was like, okay, well, I know people in Louisville. So they could use the money a lot more than, like, they could use the money, essentially. And okay. I was like, okay, um, cool. And I and I told Erica that. And Erica was like, she doesn't fucking know anyone in Louisville. And I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> It's like interpersonal drama that is now impacting like yeah praxis. like i'm getting like shit on and it's all happening publicly too yeah, yeah. okay Fuck twitter <laughs> so, holy shit so i was like what do i do and erica was like just delete the tweets so i was like okay cool so i deleted the tweets and i messaged savvy and i was like hey what do i do um what's what's you know what's going on like what 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 organization can i can i utilize or whatever and savvy had unfollowed me okay. and i was like okay what's happening and so she she sent me this this at or whatever you know this this venmo and i was like okay cool so i, I posted that up uh, or i retweeted it or whatever and then um she was like you just shouldn't tweet for the rest of your trip and i was like what what do you mean i shouldn't tweet she's like well people are really upset with you and i think that you should just refrain from tweeting until you get back from louisville hmm. i was like okay okay, uh, okay. <laughs> uh why are people why are people upset with me she's like well you're just making everything about yourself and i was like what do you mean and that's when she was like well um a bunch of uh, women of color reached out to me and told me that they were very uncomfortable with what you did yeah. in uh, Georgia. And I was like, well, why didn't they talk to me? Mm. And she said, well, um, I think that she's like, I, th I think that they think that you're going to publicly expose them and sick your fans on them or something. And I was like, I've never done anything. I would never do that. That's fucking horrible. Like that's some evil shit. I would never do that. But nobody messaged me. No one told me that they had an issue with it. And it wasn't until, um, it actually wasn't until the savvy drama blew up that uh, people of color started to attack me over this or to, to get upset with me or to criticize me or, or, or you know, any, any, any number of, of like negative interactions mm -hmm. about this. So, so I didn't know that this was an issue at this point. Okay. And she was like, yeah, a lot of women of color have come to me. And I was like, well, okay. Um, and then she was like, you should take that photo down. And I was like, I can probably even pull this up right here. So she's like, you should take that photo down. And I was like, well, I'm not going to, what? I'm not going to do that, you know? Mm. And um, when we were in, uh, oh, that's right. When we were in Georgia. Word. Yeah. Well, somebody mentions, this sounds like when you see on Wikipedia where it's like many people have said. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, yeah. 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 So, so when we were in Georgia and I took that photo in the bathroom, one of the organizers of the ICE event quote tweeted it because mm -hmm. it took me so fucking long to find a restaurant that was mm -hmm. open that would let me go to the bathroom. And then, you know, I took the fucking selfie. And so they were like, you know, when I got back, they were like, where the fuck have you been? Yeah. Uh, 
And so he like, he quote tweeted it. And Erica was like, wouldn't it be so funny if you quote tweeted that? And you were like, oh, we didn't know where she was. We thought the police took her. She was gone for so long. Yeah. And we were like, oh, that's so ridiculous. And he quote tweeted it. And he said something like that. Um, he said like, you know, we were, we were out protesting and she was doing this in the bathroom or like, you know, whatever. Like yeah. now like when I look back on it, now look back on it knowing the attitudes that people have yeah. i'm like oh, well, i would never let you say something like that today yeah. but at the time like i didn't know that this was going to be an I issue see. so it played and into this whole like this this whole like oh here's the vain sex worker you know degenerately taking a selfie well yeah i see where this is going so so, so, yeah. so he posted that up yeah. and it's so funny now when i look back that it was erica's idea um because she knew better but yeah that's beside the point um so so he posted that up and it's it's been put into memes like people took it so fucking seriously um a bunch of people were like this is what's wrong with the left like it was like a huge big fucking thing yeah. so so savvy went onto twitter and was like there's a time and a place to be sexy and it's not at a protest and I was like, oh, no. Has, has anyone seen the photos of the, like, recent protests in, in South America for feminist, for feminist rights with people who, like, with women who are proudly showing off their sexuality because they've won a liberatory struggle? What the fuck is, what the fuck is up with this mentality? Yeah, well, see, this is something that I oppose, like, so firmly on the right. This, like, neo-Puritanism um, that just drives me wild. It's like, no, the, the time and place for someone to be fucking sexy is when it's when they determine it's appropriate and, and they're not harming anyone else. Like, what the fuck? Right. So she was like, there's a time and a place to be sexy and it's not at a protest. Um, um, it got a bunch of traction. Mm -hmm. a bunch of traction right and mm -hmm. of course people were like oh, oh fucking fucking merrick at it again like you know just like do like in the comments and shit and i was like hey savvy i this didn't happen at the ice facility there wasn't even a ba i peed in the woods at the ice facility there wasn't even a bathroom there wasn't a yeah. mirror there was no place i could have done this i wasn't like fuck your uteruses i'm gonna go take a picture with my tits like that didn't yeah. happen i'm not that person first of all right um and second of all, like, it just, it didn't happen. Right. And so um, I put her in a DM. Th this was, like, right after she made, she tagged me about the money, too. Like, immediately afterwards. So, because I didn't respond to her DM fast enough about the women of color thing. Because I didn't know what to say. So I was just like, oh, fuck. I didn't address it. So then she made that tweet about me. And of course, people were naming me. And then she was in the comments talking about me and saying, oh, she, her, she got everyone worried. Every, her friends thought she'd been taken by the police mm -hmm. and she just didn't okay. care. And she let them think that. And I was like, oh, dude, come on. So, you know, I was like, I put her in a group chat with the, the organizer who made that joke. And I was like, dude, I can't handle this right now. We're on the way to Louisville. This is super stressing me out. Can you please explain to her that this didn't happen? Can you please explain to her that this happened hours later in a different city in Georgia mm -hmm. and that it was just a joke? Yeah. And so we did. And they had this full back and forth and she got him to delete his quote tweet. And I was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. And then I was like, hey, can you take down your tweet? Your tweet about me with my name plastered all over it and people talking mad shit about me is still up, dude. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I really think you should take that photo down. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, no, you lied about me. Yeah. Like, I didn't mean to, but you, 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 didn't wait, you didn't wait to get the information and you lied because you were mad that I didn't respond to your DM fast enough. You need to take that down. That's not okay to do that to me. And she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it because funny I wouldn't that. delete the yeah, funny. Yeah, because I would delete the photo. Yeah. So it's still it almost up. sounds or, like somebody is attempting to um, exert personal and social control for their personal gain over other people, and guys and hiding it in the guise of of being political and doing good praxis and speaking for the women of color or the whatever you want to. Yeah. There's only one leftist gun girl now. She she got to keep that spot. We'll <laughs> but see, uh, we'll see what we can do about that. It, it gets better. Um, so I'm like, this is crazy. And and the whole time Erica's like, I don't know what her deal is, but whatever, who cares? Just let it go. And I was like, no, this is like borderline smearing me. Mm -hmm. 
like this is not okay and like a bunch of people are really upset with me and people are making all these like sub tweets about me i've never had anything like this happen to me at this point and so i'm like no like this is really upsetting like this is not okay and erica was just kind of like whatever like don't worry about it and i was like okay man you know like i don't i don't want to be a drama queen i don't want to be a big deal um i don't want to be making a big deal out of this so then we get to we get to to louisville and um like i i paid for almost everything on this trip like sh she paid for gas but i mean i paid for our hotel rooms i paid for our airbnb like i paid for a lot of food and so i, I got us a hotel room and then she told me that um she was going to be going and getting savvy oh like a couple of days later and we didn't we didn't savvy and i didn't fix anything right. we just left at that super awkward encounter mm. and um i was like i don't want you to do that i'm really uncomfortable with this person at this point yeah like I, I don't you want me to be in a dangerous environment where the national guard is and there's a bunch of fucking cops everywhere and there's tiger swan which I, if you guys are familiar with the contracting company blackwater they became uh tiger swan so those contractors were there national guard was there police were there um it, it was like a war zone yeah you couldn't drive your car in or out there were, I mean, we were worried that there were going to be, like, fash groups. We kept hearing about, you know, those different people being there. Like, Seems like when we were, yeah, well, yeah and, and, you know, police and, and fash groups, they target medics. And, uh, yeah. Wait, police and fash groups? Wait, why did you say the same word twice? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, medics, medics are targets. And yeah, yeah, uh, this, sure. is, this we... is known, like, this is known information, you know? So, um... I was like, I don't want to go into this place where I've never been in a situation like this before. I'd been to like a, a couple of protests in Austin, but I'd never been in a situation like that before. Mm -hmm. So this was fucking scary, right? Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be in a situation with someone who just spent the last couple of days attacking and smearing me online, someone I don't trust, right? And... um and Erica was just kind of like, well, it'll be fine. I don't allow for drama on my teams. Well, that is was... kind of the definition of allowing for drama, right? If the... Yeah. yeah it, it, seems was... like, it seems to me that, like, forcing two people who aren't comfortable together is basically guaranteeing drama. I, um... I had a panic attack when she left. So, so Erica left to go be with her kid because she lives in, um... Somewhere Iowa? Okay. Somewhere in the middle of the country. So to drive from Kentucky, we drove from Georgia over to Kentucky. So then to drive from Kentucky drive. back to Iowa. I mean, it was a drive, but she, but she could do it. And, yeah. you know, um, so she took a day to go be with her kid because there was a night where I didn't go out. Um, and I, I, like I said, like I, I have a condition, you know, like I can't yeah. be out. And we weren't like eating good food. Like we didn't right. prep or plan for this. I thought I was only going to be out for a couple of days. And it turned into a week and a half. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I didn't have any of my medications. Like, I have to take this whole cocktail every day just to function like a normal human being. So there was a night where she went out without me. And apparently it was really traumatic. Like, I guess that was the night where there was the shooting. Yeah. Uh, people were shooting at the cops. And so I was sleeping that night. And so she was like, hey, I need to take a day. I need to go be with my kid. And I was like, you know what? Go be with your kid. Do that. Totally cool. And, um... I went out with some other medics, like, because I organized them for us to meet with the medics. I told you that I thought we were supposed to meet them with Erica, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as we got closer to Louisville, it became apparent that nobody had invited her. So I actually connected us with the Louisville Street medics. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so you were kind of I, really thrown into the wilds there. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, you know, I, 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 spent, um, I spent that day that she was gone with with uh some of those people and that was a really good experience and i, I really enjoyed that and um it, there was this amazing sense of unity oh man i i i wish that i could i wish i had taken more like videos or, or pictures yeah, or something risky, though. It, it was, i do that it for that awesome. reason you know i know yeah. i know i know but it was it was incredible um and i had a, I had a great fucking a great time and people were the people were in good spirits and things were good and then um she 
went to Chicago and she picked up Savvy and she brought her back. And she basically told me at the last minute that this was going to happen. This was just how it was. Yeah. And I didn't really have like a say in the matter. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Whatever. But the day that she left to go get her, I had this like massive panic attack in the, in the the hotel room. And I was like, I have to go, I have to go back to Texas. I I, like booked a plane ticket right then and there. Um, I was like freaking out. Like I called my husband and uh, I was just like, I I can't be here. I'm I'm losing my mind. Like, this is so fucked up. Like, can you believe that this is happening right now? Am I being a drama queen? And he was like, no, you're not being a drama queen. You need to fucking leave. That's not okay. That's really weird that that's happening. And he was like, don't trust that girl. Yeah. Like she just, it, she just attacked you publicly. Don't trust that girl. And so yeah. I was like super wigged out. Um, and I, I booked a plane ticket and I started to pack up everything. And then I was like, wow, I'm being a fucking baby. Like I'm being such a drama queen right now. And so I, I, I called someone else. I called um, a, a YouTuber that I'm, I'm really close. I'm close with. And, and I was like, I'm flipping out. What do I do? And he was like, Hey, 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 like take a deep breath, calm down can you do you think you can talk this out with this person right like you know do you think that you being there is more important than whatever this bullshit interpersonal drama is mm-hmm. and i was like okay yeah yeah i can be a team player okay you know you're right like this yeah, is yeah. bigger than my personal drama so i stayed and um savvy came down they, they you know they stayed in my hotel room there were two beds and uh, Sally stayed in the room and uh i was actually told she was gonna get another place to stay Mm -hmm. um and when she got down there like at first she wouldn't acknowledge me she wouldn't talk to me she wouldn't look at me whatever and so finally i was just like it was yeah and i i i I didn't like it (laughs) but so i i pulled her aside and i was like hey let's let's talk about what happened right um because i feel very weird (laughs) and uh we kind of like smoothed it over you know and she was like okay well actually one woman reached out to me and so it wasn't a bunch of women of color it was one woman who had organized the event another organizer of the event had apparently messaged savvy and said that she didn't like what i had done so i was like okay um well, you know, this is why I did this. This is why I did that. You know, I, I had reasons for the things that I did. Um, I understand where you were coming from if someone messaged you. Mm-hmm. So this is like just such fucking high school bullshit drama. Yeah, yeah. This. yeah it's absolutely. so stupid. And I don't like, I feel even weird telling the story because so much of it every step of the way is just like really petty. Well, I mean, that's kind uh, of the thing, right? Like that's kind of the weird era that we live in where it's like so much. And, and, and I think... Uh, maybe this isn't universal, but but at least in the spaces we're in, so much shit transpires on public spaces on Twitter, and people don't treat it like it's a public space. They treat it like it's their their like personal chat or whatever. But in reality, anybody can pop in on this shit. Anybody can see it. It's just like what, like yeah. yeah. So I I so- feel where you're coming from on that. It is like ridiculously like um, it's childish. And, yeah, it could have been a DM. All of this could have been one DM. Yeah, but yeah, so, exactly. So around this time, so I, I smoothed things over with her. Mm-hmm. And I think we're there for a couple of more days. And uh, around this time, do you guys know the Grey Zone News? I think I'm familiar with this person. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. Alex, I think his name is Alex Rubenstein. Let me look this shit up. This is a journalist. And isn't that the guy who, um, well... Maybe I should wait and preserve judgment. I feel like I remember Alex Blumenthal. Is that him? Am I Alex Blumenthal? Um, Max Blumenthal, Max I think works. For... Max Blumenthal. Okay. Is this him? I don't know. He has like twenty six thousand followers or somewhere. He had twenty four at the time. Okay. Um, but he had uh, he had like mocked me before like quote tweeting me before about anarchist theory because every time i would post some goofy photo about anarchist theory all these lefty men would lose their yeah, mind and talk about like oh i hate it when women talk oh <laughs> i'm the <laughs> smartest so i would like shit post about stuff like yeah. that and people would 
open minds. And so this is someone who had quote tweeting me before, and and they are apparently they're genocide deniers. I don't really uh, know much. Did, well, see, that's the that was the thing I was gonna hold my shut. I heard a lot of I've heard of them uh, them engaging yeah. in a lot of of uh, Uyghur uh, denialism. I should say. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really know much about their publication, but this is what I have been told. Okay. Um. So they are. Um, yeah so anyway so he he had quote tweeted me talking shit before and i was like okay whatever but he threw i don't know you're some someone in your chat might remember that he threw a huge fit because um i had surpassed him in followers when we were in louisville <laughs> he got really fucking mad about it and like made a whole a tweet feeling. about it it's a great feeling. I know. He, he was like, you know, hardworking journalists like myself and whatever can, you know, we, we bust our backs to, to get this. And then, you know, this E thought whatever. <laughs> like, okay, my man. Like, it was just so much drama happened when I was in Louisville that was just like dumb shit where I was like, I don't have time for this. I'm afraid of the police right now. <laughs> like, I don't have time for this. But so... So there was all this crazy drama that was still happening when, when we were in Louisville. And um, that last night that we were there, they, and by they I mean Savvy and Erica, mm -hmm. invited this TikTok influencer. Mm -hmm. okay. Invited this other social media influencer okay. that they knew, um, who was apparently also a medic. Okay. And so... Um, he he came down for the last night or whatever and uh that was the night that everything popped off with the cops that was the night that the shit got set on fire that was the night where we were supposed to hold the square past curfew um and then we we didn't end up doing that i guess at the last minute um whoever was organizing that night kind of like killed the crowd's momentum and a bunch of people scattered when they were supposed to stay and hold the square so it's just a reality yeah, yep. you know, yeah it just it just lost steam and dissipated so it didn't end up happening and so you know we we have to get to this um we have to get to this church where we have essentially sanctuary after curfew. And if we set foot off the church, then they arrest you. Yeah. So, you know, um, Erica like ditches out. She's like, fuck this. I'm not getting arrested. I'm leaving. And she bounces out. Okay. And the rest of us are kind of like, uh oh. okay. <laughs> you know, we, we, we waited to see if we were going to stay and we decided not to. So, um, we are there in a, in a medic capacity and this is something that got me in a lot of trouble before was saying that being there in a medic capacity but um i wasn't supposed to be there protesting i was supposed to be there assisting medics Fair. and helping people and kind of staying back from everything so um i was paired with this other guy because he knows a lot more than i did okay so um we were kind of bringing up the rear and people who were straggling because we want to make sure that the cops aren't fucking with them on the way to the sanctuary area. And then uh, they call curfew while we're still in the street. We're like maybe a couple of blocks away from the church. And so we have to run essentially because yeah. that's it. They're, yeah. they're li the we're literally you. by move. police. Yep. We're literally being chased by police. We were like chased out into the streets and people were like starting to drive into the streets. And I, I almost saw someone get hit by a car. Like it was oh ridiculous. Yeah, um, it was yeah, it was really intense. We saw them grab some girl and take her down. We tried to get as many people as we could, but we lost like this one girl. Like it was, it was, it was really weird and intense and, and just like emotionally exhausting. And, um, him and I literally held hands and ran across a parking lot from the police. Mm -hmm. So there was this like trauma bonding experience. Mm -hmm. um, and he was really attractive, okay. <laughs> we should say. He was, him and I like hit it off. Um, and we ended up getting stuck in the church that night until about 3 a.m. Um, and he had some thing where he couldn't be, couldn't be caught doing something unlawful because of a certain status that he had. Sure. So, um, I, I get you on that. Yep. Right, right, right. Mm. So I, you know, I, I can't really go into details, but, um, so it was really, really stressful mm -hmm. and we kept hearing from the security teams that were there and from the people who were actually working at the church that 
they were trying to negotiate with the cops outside because I guess some kids had set some stuff on fire in the street. Okay. So they declared it a riot um, and they declared it arson. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the FBI showed up and they were trying to figure out whether they were going to come in and arrest all of us. That was what, that's what we were, were told and what we had known. That's so uh, yeah, it was awful. It was awful. And uh, I, I didn't know if we were all going to go to jail. I didn't know if he was going to go to a much more serious place like it, it was very it was intense um so they they actually at one point we thought they were coming in so they set up this whole room to look like a, a, a part of the church for unhoused people mm -hmm. and we like put on like shaggy clothes and like put away our electronics and made it seem like we were unhoused people like <laughs> we were we it was very it was very, it was a very very weird situation yeah so you know, him, him and I had been sort of flirting. And, and at this time, um, I was thinking that I was going to get divorced at this time. Mm -hmm. um, something, a conversation that, you know, my, my husband and I had had uh, shortly before I left. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'd been sick for a long time. And, you know, I hadn't been, hadn't been intimate with my husband in a very long time. And, you know, it just like a lot of personal things were happening. Yeah, yeah. And I, um, that night when we finally when they finally let us out we went back to our hotel room and they didn't book another hotel room for him so there are two beds mm -hmm. and it's me erica savvy and him so erica and savvy are like chummy like they're friends they went they were in kenosha together and savvy had been sleeping in erica's bed with her so he slept in the bed with me okay um and i this is my bad okay uh, It was said that we had sex on Twitter, um, but that's not what happened. Basically, we just made out and like felt each other up. Okay. Uh, and I understand that that's still inappropriate. So. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a very common occurrence in uh, college dorms, you know. Um... Right, right. But um, I thought that Savvy was asleep. Erica was snoring very loudly. It was very clear that she was asleep. Um, and, you know, we, we thought that we thought everyone was asleep. Lights yeah. were off. Um, you know, we were under covers. Like, I was trying to be quiet. Um, By the way, don't feel like you have to explain this in detail if it's not comfortable to you. Like, Well, I mean, this is something that's been made public and there's been some pretty nasty untruths told. Okay. And it's, yeah. you know, I'm perfectly so fine with us discussing this. I just don't want you to feel like you're pressured because you're on the platform or whatever. Well, I no, realize we kind of got okay. to this point a little late, but you know, it's okay. This this like became a thing of spec. This is something that people like throw at me to attack me okay. still. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was like some I don't I don't even know if that's second base shit. Like I, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Okay. Um, and you know, it was discussed maybe taking it further and decided that that was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And so then we just cuddled and went to sleep. Okay. Um, and he left in the morning, and then we parted ways that next day. Okay. And that morning, everything seemed fine. Everyone greeted me normally. Everything was okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got home, I found that Savvy had blocked me on Twitter. Okay. And one of the organizers who was organizing the medics had made this post like thanking me and thanking everyone who was there. And I was trying, I was like in a conversation with her trying to get uh, information about how to send people her way, like who to send them to that sort of thing. And so she gave me all this information. And then um, when I went to go get all of it to make a post about it, she had blocked me as well. Hmm. So I was like, okay, that's weird. And I reached out to Erica and I was like, Hey Erica, what's going on? And, um, nothing. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days, a couple of days went by and I reached out to Erica again. And I was like, Hey, like what's happening? I thought everything was okay. Can you explain to me what's happening? Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to the guy involved and he was like, I don't think it has anything to do with what happened. Like she hasn't blocked me. I mean, mm -hmm. she did. She, like Damn. everything was 
we didn't do any like we didn't do anything that bad like i, I don't it can't be that it has to be something else she's still talking to me yeah hey, so hey chat like, we know what this is called right we know what this is uh, called it's that classic sexism yep so so erica didn't talk to me either yeah. and then i was like okay well who knows this is weird mm -hmm. and then um and then I guess Savvy blocked him, or so he told me. Mm -hmm. So he told me. I don't really think that that happened anymore. But um, oh, what is this? Is this pork chops? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I love you. Savvy didn't block me. Still like my problem. Shit, looks good. Yeah, we'll get there. I love you. Mm. I like your Christmas Hello. sweater. Oh, mm. sorry. Christmas sweater. Oh. <laughs> You're on camera now. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Miss Hi. Miss Mom. This How you doing? Good. Show them Hello. I love this. <laughs> Chevy Chase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, give me a bite of that though. Okay. So, um, where was I? Hey, go away. <laughs> I'm taking another bite. <laughs> no, go away. <laughs> well. Oh, no, I cook this for me and you. Gotta eat the pork chops. They're good. I love you. Bye. Mm -hmm. So annoying. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I love you. Um. So 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 anyway, I I just I'm like well, super fucking weird, but whatever, man. Uh, fucking shit happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I I go about my life. And um, and then the uh, now infamous sexual mutual aid tweets were made. <laughs> so, oh boy. Oh boy. Um, so basically, I was like, you know, I, I'd seen a lot of talk about how um, sex work won't exist under communism. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a little goofy. I don't think that's a very realistic way to look at things. And so I tweeted, I was like, hey guys, I think sex work will still exist under communism. And then a bunch of uh, communists got really mad at me because they were like, listen, you can't call it work because there won't be any work under communism. There won't be any money. There won't be any, it, it'll just be labor. And I was like, okay, well, sex labor is the worst thing I've ever said. So I'm not going to call it that. That sounds fucking terrible. Pedantic, like, yeah. pedantic, so sketchy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna say sex labor will exist. So, um, I I was I was like thinking about it a little bit more, and I was like, okay, so what what would that sort of thing look like in a society where there are no jobs and where there is no money? Um, and I I thought about it, and I was like, well, porn will still exist. Mm -hmm. I would hope so. School. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus Please. fucking Christ. I need it. Holy <laughs> shit. Exactly. Um, but so I was like, well, you know, I mean, porn would still exist. Like, so obviously that's, that's sex work. You know, I mean, if, you know, we're not calling it work, but like that's sex work. That would sure. still exist. So, um, and then, you know, I, I, I was thinking like, there probably would be like companions too. Mm -hmm people who would like want to provide like intimacy services. Cause I think, I don't know. I, I think there'll always be like a need for that. Right. And I always, I think that there will be like a small number of people who, who would be willing to provide something like that. Yeah. And that, that's just from like, people, people already post nude photos of themselves and their porn for free on Reddit. Like that's already a thing that yeah, their job, people, they don't, some people do that. Yeah. Some, some, yeah, some, some people, people might have done that. Exactly. So some people on this phone yeah, call some people have on this done call that. Have done that. Yeah. <laughs> but so um this is already a thing that exists. And there's like um there's people who do um oh, what is it called? I don't I'm like so gun shy. I don't want to say any words wrong because I don't want people to clip this and be like, look at this, you know, look at look at this dumb bitch. <laughs> I'm wait, like, wait, so... here we go. Ready? Watch. I'll make it uh, clear. Um hold on. Uh how do we how do we do this? Uh, how do we make sure that this becomes unclippable? All right, everybody, hold on a second. Um, here we go. All right, I want you to say the point, but 
I'm going to ask you in the voice of a German inquisitor. Okay, no. what are you going to say? No. <laughs> okay, I love it. Um. Heil Hitler, 1488, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. Um, I disavow. So, um, I, there, there are people today who provide uh, services for people who are disabled. Like, there are... Yes, there are, yes. Yeah, so, so, th so that exists. Like, for the so, Fuhrer? Oh, my God, please. <laughs> okay. So, anyway... So that was my thinking, right? I was like, <clears throat> there's literally already um, compassionate sexual services. There's already components of our society that offer this. And I was talking to someone else who who um, has read a, a lot more anarchist theory than I have, actually. And he was like, well, you know, if it's not work, couldn't it be closer technically to, like, mutual aid? Because you're providing these yeah. sexual services. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> So what you are saying is that the German people <laughs> should be giving sexual mutual aid to their fatherland. Mm. This, this is, oh God, this is going to be so bad when I tell you about the Nazi comparisons people <laughs> made with. <laughs> so, um, so I was like, okay, well, that's a silly name, but maybe that's actually more technically accurate. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, you guys didn't like sex work will exist under communism you guys thought that was that was a no-no and i was like what do you guys think about the term sexual mutual aid like is that not uh technically more accurate because what you're doing is you're like well a community that's healthy and happy and part of that is having intimacy services it, it just is a healthier place like uh, countries like india um, that ban porn or countries like Saudi Arabia that are super fucking uh, sexually repressed they're horrible to their women they're awful mm -hmm. um, and, and, and circles and, and places that are very very sexually repressed tend to be extremely toxic oh so, absolutely I agree with you yeah I mean look right. at, like, I mean again even in our own history America specifically is one of those places we are a country that is um, obsessed with sex and and when i say obsessed with sex i don't mean obsessed with having sex we're obsessed with controlling how yeah. people think about sex how people talk about sex how we what you can do with your own body we're obsessed with that and it does i do believe it comes from our puritanical hyper christian um roots for the record just so you know um i grew up in an extremist christian cult so i am very familiar with the way that sex is weaponized and used to control women specifically um, mm -hmm. and how these sorts of double standards like run all the way to the tops of these organizations. Um, in the, in the cult that I grew up in, the, the leaders, the male leaders who often talked about sexual chastity and all this shit fucked on the side all the time, all the time. But women were policed to a degree of, uh, 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 it's unfathomable that the, the yeah. level to which women would be policed. It's a hundred percent about control. Every yeah. single cult is like that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I see somebody on the YouTube chat saying this is the least important thing in a communist society. Twitter, Twitter lefties are subhuman. Um, and there were a lot of people that were really fucking mad at me. Wait, for who, who said that? Hey, document the drama. I will debate with you after this. So I hope you come onto the website chat because I will have a debate with you after this discussion. I would love to talk with you. This sounds like an incredible time. Get on the website. Get in the Discord. Someone give <laughs> document the drama the di link to the Discord. We'll be having a debate after this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're very um, <laughs> but but so so this was actually something that a lot of people said. They were like, "Why are you even talking about this? This is stupid." But it's like, well, I'm a sex worker, so of course these are the kind of things I'm going to be thinking about. And there was so much like just sex negative bullshit constantly thrown at me all the time. So I was like, let's get like a let's get a nicer perspective on this, a more sex positive perspective. But um. So, you know, it was like, I was like, okay, it's kind of a silly name, but what do you guys think about sexual mutual aid? Because the whole, the whole thing is like, you know, I think that the kind of people who would be willing to engage in like intimacy services, and that doesn't even mean full service either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I think most people know that um, sex work encompasses a lot more than full service. Of course. Um, but, oh, excuse me, hold on. Bless you. Bless you. Um, the sneeze shivers. The only good <sighs> part of a sneeze. But so, um, 
it encompasses a lot more than just uh, full service. But a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Like when you say sex work, a lot of people think that you're just talking about like straight, hetero, penetrative sex. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like it's very, um, it's, it's, it's a very like jarring term for a lot of people, I think. Sure. But so, so I made, I made these tweets and, and I was like, well, you know, I think the kind of people that would end up engaging in something like that would probably do so because they thought that they were being, you know, benefiting society in some way. And we're going to have people who have access to people who just spend time with them and just listen to them. And, and this also comes from my experiences in the strip club because I was a stripper for six years. Mm -hmm. And this isn't something that I've like talked a lot about on, but um, I was a, I was a big like blowout stage girl. I wasn't really like a, a room hustler or a dance mm -hmm. hustler or anything like that. So a lot of my regulars, when I did get rooms, it was guys that just wanted to talk. And it was guys that just wanted to spend time with me. And it wasn't really a lot of like, oh, you have to dance this whole time. It was a lot of like, hold me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I had a customer, one of my one of my last regulars used to come in and um, I would literally just hug him mm -hmm. for the whole time. And sometimes like he would cry and, you know, like a lot of being a dancer is being a therapist. And so I do think that there is a lot of uh, need for this sort of like emotional outlet and this companionship. Mm -hmm. And so this was really where I was coming from with this idea is I was like, hey, I think that this could be an interesting idea. I think we should talk about this. Um, so I was like, okay, you guys didn't like the term sex work. What do you guys feel about sexual mutual aid? I, and I know that's kind of goofy, but and, and at first people were like, Okay, yeah, sure. I, I, I can kind of see what you're saying. I get where you're coming from with that. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, around this time, I had been feuding with Radfim Twitter. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Uh -huh. you, you probably are familiar with Radfims. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. They, they love people like me. They sure oh, well, they love, love people like me and definitely don't want us to be put into a chamber with a type of air that would hurt me. Um, yeah. 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 They, they certainly don't want to uh, take away opportunities from people like you and I. Yeah, yeah. yeah precisely. So, <clears throat> so you know, um, I had been feuding with Radfim Twitter. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think that, you know, everything was fine. People were like, okay, kind of a wacky idea, whatever. But then Radfims came in and they were like, what the fuck is this? This is sexual slavery. Uh, so I was no, like, no. what? <laughs> no. And then, you know, people started jumping on and being like, well, um, there, you know, if there's no work, then if you're having sex with people under communism and there's no work and there's no wages and there's no money, um, then that's just pity sex. And I was like, well, not really, because I think that the kind of person, th there's a very, 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 very small number of people that I think that would engage in full service in a society like this. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a lot of people. But I think There's definitely people who would like, I mean, oh, like, oh, again, there's... you know, I'm really plugged into, you know, the trans community is, you know, I, I, I am a part of it very much so. And there's a lot of people who would be perfectly fine with that sort of thing, um, you know, that that are, you know, once people start to step out of like heteronormativity and start to think about themselves, there's like there's people who would be very happy with that sort of thing as long as they were in control of what they had to do. You know what I mean? Well, and, yeah. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so. You know, my, my understanding of, of, of communism is that it's stateless and classless and moneyless and jobless. So there's not this, like, state directory who's like, you know, it's your turn at the glory all today. Like, mm, it, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Um, so, you know, I'm, and I'm also, I'm also an anarchist. So right. the whole idea behind this is like, and I made this very clear, too, where I was like, you know, I think the kind of people who, who would engage in something like this in full service in a situation like this, um, you know, they're going to be doing so of their own accord, right? right of but I also think it's, like, shitty and disrespectful to be like, well, that's just pity sex. Because it's like, well, no, I think that people who would provide a service like that deserve a modicum of respect from you. Right. Um, and, and, and I think that that's, like... I think that people who would engage in something like that, I think that's kind of noble. Well, that's um, very and I much, think that seems to me very much uh, a perspective that like um, looks down on like, I don't know. It's like this hypocritical, like looking down on someone because 
the circumstances of their life like led them to want to pay for sex or to in this case not pay because it's a you know but to a approach somebody else for sex i think that's absolutely wild to me right now my mind is thinking of like this incredible book that i read written by um a trans author called it's a it's a novel a visual novel or not a visual novel that's the wrong word um a graphic novel um called the pervert i don't know if you've ever heard of it um but uh, absolutely incredible i really really love it um and the main character works as a sex worker for a, for most of the story um and one of their clients literally just an older guy who's like his wife passed away and like just pays her to go hang out and talk and that's all and he pays her quite a lot and like there's a scene in that where when the main character finally moves like she's really sad because like yeah. they've built a certain like type like rapport you know rapport you know they've built this relationship over time that's you know it has its boundaries and it has its limits but nonetheless is something that's absolutely worthy of respect and something that has been mutually yeah. beneficial and yeah so yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't understand why this is a hard concept for some people to, to understand besides this sort of like knee jerk reactionary impulse that, oh, sex work is, you know, perversion or degeneracy or blah, blah, blah. These sort of highly judgmental moral judgments. Yeah. Um, it, it, I was really surprised, actually, because it, it was going fine mm -hmm. and then it like took a left turn. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it was when, you know, the Rabbitohms came in and kind of were like, well, what do you, what do you mean by that? What, what, what is this? Cause I, and this is probably my bad too. I, I said the wrong word. I think I said the word sacrifice at one point mm -hmm. because, um, I was thinking about like my own time in, in the club and, and it was really fucking emotionally draining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being like a therapist and, and uh, an emotional companion for people. And you are, you are sacrificing like you, it's, it's takes a lot. Um, and so I think I used the wrong word, okay. um, and that seemed to really set a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really unfortunate because someone actually messaged me something like what you said, and she did it privately. She didn't want to, you know, she didn't want to deal with it, but she was like, uh, I think she said my, my best friend, she was like, my best friend had, um, had cancer. Her best friend was a lesbian, and I guess towards the end of her life, she had um, a sex worker who would, like, come and spend time with her and, like, lay with her in her hospital bed. Mm -hmm. And just, she yeah. she was there with her when she died. Yeah. I mean, she told me this beautiful story, and she was like, thank you. Thank you for saying something like this, because it wasn't, I guess it wasn't really something they talked to a lot of other people about. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. But she, she was like, it was this really good thing for her, and it was kind. Yeah. And um it just sort of spiraled out of control and a lot of i think like sex worker twitter found it because i had a lot of sex workers were following me but they weren't necessarily following me because they were communists yeah, yeah. um and I think a lot of people don't know what communism means they think of the ussr yeah yeah Oh, for and sure, so, 100%. Red Scare is, like, deeply ingrained in our society. Right, sure. right, right, right. So a lot of people were like, "Is I, I, I saw people being like, this bitch is talking about sex slavery. And, like, people were like, she's talking about comfort women. Um, you know, this is so fucking insulting. This happened in my country. Um, you know, the, like, you're, of course, you know, fucking white leftists. Like, your soldiers came to my country and, and raped our women, and they did this, and they made them comfort women, and that's what you're saying. And I was like, no. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. This is no uh, attempt, but... no attempt to engage in like in any sort of good faith. No, no, and yeah. it, it started to like spiral, and and I started to see these posts where people were like, "This is fucking disgusting. This is vile. This is sex slavery. This is government forced uh, prostitution. Like this is incel shit." And I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> guys!" But it was everywhere. Like I'm surprised you didn't see this. Did you oh, I've seen some time? of this. Yes. Yeah, I've seen. Oh, yeah, I saw some yeah. of this. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yep. I think everyone has seen this. I saw yeah, a thread I don't, the other I, don't, I, I remember seeing the sexual mutual aid tweet and going like, what, who's retweeting this and why is there discord, discourse on it? And I just went, whoop, because I was thinking about other things at the time. 
And, you know, yeah. it was just kind of like, I. this seems like people are freaking out over a random tweet like they always do, which it, is, it, you know, 120 character medium means that every single word is hyper fixated on and nobody even makes an attempt to uh, to try and figure out what somebody was trying to say. And because discourse can't happen on Twitter, no progress is ever made. No one ever sees clarification. It's terrible. It's a monster, yeah. A monster um, so, so I started seeing all these threads about like people tag like like journalists started t like tagging me and stuff, and people with blue checks mm -hmm. started making memes talking about how I'm a piece of fucking trash and how I want sex slavery and how I'm a female incel. Um, and a lot of like this a lot of like sex workers started to be like, well, um, all of these men in your comments are saying disgusting fucking things and you need to take accountability and you need to take responsibility for it. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. And like some of the things that I looked at that were like super incel disgusting men was like this, there was one guy who was like, yeah, you know, before capitalism, uh, sex used to be like a spiritual thing and it needs to return to that when capitalism is wow, over. And I was like, that's pretty cringe. Like, some, you uh, know, I love that um, magical woo bullshit. Like it was kind of, yeah, it was really wooey, but I wouldn't, it was very, very, very far away from like the government needs to give us mandated girlfriends yeah, and yeah, women yeah. Have dogs and they prefer chads. Like it wasn't like that at all. But you know, these, these sex workers were like flipping out about this and they were like, you know, it, it came up again recently because she on head tweeted it and she was like, haha, remember how stupid this was? And like, she tweeted it out or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so that just reignited the discourse all over Damn, again. Maybe about I should do a drama mama on this. <laughs> I'm kidding. I won't. <laughs> I don't fucking want to talk to Shu about it. I'm salty. Yeah. So I'm real salty about it. Ooh, boy. But um, so right. she, so she, she, you know, and she tweeted this shit out and a couple of weeks ago actually, and, and I had a, a sex worker who was like, um, they, those guys wouldn't have been able to talk about it if you hadn't have brought it up. So it's your responsibility. And you need to take accountability for that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what? I don't, I, yeah, I, like, I, I don't, I don't know Twitter. what. Twitter, what the fuck? Well, so the, it's been the thing is like, from the moment that I had like 10,000 followers or so, like everyone has been like, you need to take accountability. You need to take responsibility for this, that, and the other. And it's been like, dude, I don't, what, <laughs> what do you mean? Um, so I don't I don't know. The whole thing was really toxic. A lot of sex workers were really mad at me um, because I because I gave men something to talk about that they wanted. And and at one point, someone was like, yeah, if you're a sex worker and a bunch of and you say something controversial and a bunch of men are agreeing with you, you fucked up. And I was like, what? I don't, literally, I don't, what the fuck? That's what, actually, what I, well, I just want to take one quick second real quick because there's something I thought of. I don't want to forget about it. But um, just for anyone who's like sitting there thinking like, oh, like companionship or sexual mutual aid or whatever these terms are isn't like a valid concept. I just want to blow your minds with a really, really fucking sad fact about American society. Did you know that like uh, older, older folks who are on like uh, who are in retirement or um, who uh, are receiving Social Security, you know that they're like the, the amount of times they go to the doctor for absolutely no reason at all skyrockets. And the reason for that is because they have no one and they literally go to the doctor all the time to just talk to the nurses and talk to the doctor because they're that lonely. Do you know that's a, like a recognized, well-studied phenomenon here in the United States? So if you think that like our society doesn't have a need for um, for companionship and also that our society isn't currently set up to completely ruin the way that we interact with one another in its current manner and that there aren't other ways of thinking about this, I'm sorry, but I think you just need to take a second look at the world around you because there are a fuckload of really, really lonely people through no fault of their own. Um, and this doesn't even consider other aspects like the phenomenon that's going on within the incel community, which I intend to talk about very soon. Um, but but yeah, um, there's a loneliness crisis in America and, and the idea that there isn't some place for this. I mean, fuck, there were societies that had like willing sex worker high priestesses. Like that was considered a, there were multiple societies that had high priestess positions where you were basically a sex worker who, who had more power to determine what relationships you took and what you didn't. And that was considered a position of high honor. Like, 
like people got to get out of this like hyper American, super late capitalist uh, way of looking at relationships and, and commodifying every single relationship and thinking that, oh, wait a minute, we don't actually have needs for like communicative, um, you know, whether it's sex work or whether it's intimacy, which, you know, there's a lot of overlaps or whether it's just companionship, which there's a lot of overlaps with intimacy. I mean, also another great example of this, look at fucking a the ASMR community. The ASMR community is not even sexual. It's just intimate. It's just um, people trying to gain some sense of, of, of le like intimacy and comfort that they remember from childhood or whatever. And that's like literally massive. It's blown up and it's not going anywhere. It's still growing. That's how big it is. Yeah, get out of here, Donald Trump. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> anyway, so, sorry. That was a little bit of a, dis a distraction. I just wanted to get it out there, you know, in case there's anybody who doesn't think that this is an issue that needs to be discussed. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, I, I agree with you, and this is something that, you know, I've been thinking about a lot, is that there's, um, you know, there is a loneliness crisis, and especially amongst young men. Um, and that's really kind of scary um and i i don't want to live in a world where i don't want to live in a world where people are sexually repressed where they don't have access to sexual aids like porn and i don't want to live in a world where um you don't have the option of human intimacy and kindness from someone who is willing to provide that to you mm. so this was my whole thing um i didn't think that this was this controversial of a take um but it, it got turned yeah um this is something that people still use to try and like humiliate me and mock me and drag me for and talk about how fucking stupid i am and how i'm an idiot and like you know there, there was a thread a while back a couple maybe like last week that was like the worst takes of 2020 the worst discourse of 2020 and like a bunch of people were like oh that stupid sexual mutual aid girl and it was just like damn guys i think that this is a pretty reasonable thing to say that i you know um, but, but so I got dragged pretty fucking relentlessly for this, um, and... <clears throat> got a small request real quick from, uh, from chat. Um, yes. you, you cool with, with, uh, joining me in a, a, uh, small moment of trans rights and trans thriving? Can you, yes. can you say that with me? Cause I'm, I'm good for it. Cause I believe very strongly in trans rights and trans thriving. We got a lot of trans people in this audience. A lot of trans people are sex workers. A lot of trans people are marginalized on their sexuality. So yeah. just figured it would be a nice thing to throw out there as we got a request from chat, if you're cool with that. Yeah. Well, you're yeah, saying just, trans rights? Yeah. Trans rights and trans thriving. That's all we want to hear from you. Okay, cool. Trans rights and trans thriving. There you have it. Yeah. Fucking yeah. yeah. There you go, Dan Starlight. That was for you. There you go. So, yeah. Um, so, so this, yeah. this tweet, this tweet, um, got, I, I got fucking annihilated over this tweet. People were fucking livid. They were furious with me. They were so fucking angry. I was disgusting. I was vile. This was incel shit. People were like, you know, you want sex slavery. Like, it was a lot. Um, and then Savvy saw it. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, Savvy saw this tweet, she saw I was getting dragged for it, and she went onto Twitter, and she said, I don't think we should be looking to Merrick for consent discourse, because she had sex in the hotel room next to me without my consent. Yeah. And, yeah. um, So I guess she had gone around to a couple of my mutuals mm -hmm. before she made this tweet. And she, like, told them that I had done this or whatever. Okay. So so she, like, went around and talked to a couple of people. And then she, like, waited. So this happened maybe two weeks after everything, mm -hmm. after Louisville. So she waited for two weeks. And then she saw that I was getting dragged for this. Mm. And she came out. And she saw was like, an I have an opportunity for some clout, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so she's like, I don't think we should be looking to Merrick for consent discourse because she had sex in the hotel room next, right next to me and, you know, without getting my consent. And she knew that um, I am a sexual assault survivor and that I have PTSD from sexual trauma. And then she went on to make this whole thread about me where she was like, 
Um, she didn't listen to me when we were on the ground and she put us in danger because she didn't listen to me when we were in Louisville and she didn't take her fingernails off because I have, I wear acrylics. Um, I always wear acrylics. So about three weeks before the Georgia trip, I had gotten my acrylics done. So I don't know if you know this, but you can't really like just pop acrylic off. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, right. Um, so even if you have acetone, you can soak your fingers in acetone. You can sit there for an hour. If you have a good nail tech, they're not coming off. Right. You have to go to a salon and get them taken off. Mm -hmm. So when we went to when when we first went to go protest, we were just supposed to be protesting in Georgia, right? Like I said, the the trip to Louisville came later. Mm. Um so I didn't have anything I could do about the nails. The city was in a state uh, 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 the governor had issued a state of emergency. The city was in lockdown. Um, they had closed down the gas stations near us. Everything was boarded up. Um, you, you, there was no, there wasn't a nail salon in, right. in Louisville, Kentucky that I could I, go. I, mean, well, I just want to take a second here to say, like, I feel like the the recurring the recurring theme of this entire um, this entire story is like people you don't know and have no contact with or have had very little contact with expecting you to basically explain every single aspect of your life or else you are X. And often, even when you do, you still are X thing that they've accused you of. Yeah. It's so, really ridiculous. I feel like that's an unbelievable standard to hold someone to. And I will say, it is kind of weird how on social media, that does seem to be targeted largely at women who are public you know in public space that there's this oh well, you need to explain this you need to explain that you need to explain this what are you up to what is this what are you doing that you know what i mean this undue scrutiny that's perpetual and and we've ta i've talked about this on a panel there's a panel that's um on twitch is very popular called the amazon lily um panel it's all femme presenting people this sort of shit comes up all the time the sort of ease with which some people with with which people approach women on platforms and femme presenting people on platforms and with this entitlement to know every detail about their life and if you don't tell it you're doing something wrong yeah so i figured yeah. i would just point that out to the audience and also make my thought on it <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you yeah um so she she included in this comment that um i had refused to take my fingernails off um even when treating patients and that I had put people's lives, basically said that I had put my fingernails before people's lives. Um, and then um, she said that I was calling myself a fake medic because there was one tweet where, um, cause when we were in Louisville, like I was, you know, geotagging things and I was hashtagging things. And um, a bunch of like conservatives and libs had been commenting on one of my posts right when the state of emergency was declared. And um, very publicly, someone was like, you guys need to not give them a fight. You need to not start violence. You need to not whatever. And I was like, hey, no one here is doing that. Um, I was like, I'm here in a medic capacity, mm -hmm. like not here to start violence. Yeah. So just here to help. I didn't I didn't know that it wasn't OK to say that. OK. Uh, and I, I, I guess I went on a podcast when I came back and I, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I explained to them that I had gone to Louisville with Erica and I was like, yeah, you know, I went, I went to Louisville to, to work as a medic, like to, to do that because that was the whole point of me going to Louisville with Erica was that she was going to give me hands-on training and I was going to be helping her with patients. I was going to be learning things. She said that that was fine. That was okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... And then when we got there in Louisville, the main medic, the one who was like coordinating with people, she was like, hey, what can you do? And I was like, well, I can, um, I, I've done all my stop the bleed certification. I have an Israeli bandage. I can pack wounds. Um, I can, you know, use the chest seal. Like I know how to use a tourniquet. Um, I, you know, I can, I can stitch stuff up. I can do all this stuff. And she was like, oh, as far as I'm concerned, you're a medic. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need to be placed with someone who knows more. Like I'm not comfortable. Like I did everything. I did everything because I wasn't comfortable an being alone. An abundance alive. of caution. Yeah, because I don't, God forbid, it's just me and someone who's hurt. Like, I yeah, don't yeah. want to be 
situation. So, yeah. you know, I, I did what I thought was the right thing to do every step of the way. And then, you know, when I went on this podcast afterwards, I was like, yeah, you know, I went there to, to work as I had gone with Erica to work as a medic. So I guess Savvy and Erica um, used that as proof that I lie about being a medic, like a full-fledged medic. And they told people that I had lied about that. And she said that I had uh, refused to take my nails off when talked about it, which Savvy and I never spoke about it. I asked Erica if it was okay. And I like kind of apologized to her. I was like, I'm sorry. I don't, you know, there's nothing I can do. And Erica was like, oh, don't worry about it. That was the only time my nails were ever mentioned. Um, and then, yeah, she said that I put them in danger because I didn't listen to her. Um, but what she didn't explain was there was one incident where, um, we were walking this way and someone else was coming perpendicular and I turned around and I took like 20 steps towards them mm -hmm. and they were still like a whole city block away. And then I saw what, cause they were carrying something. So yeah. I saw he was carrying like a case and then I was like, okay. And then we kept walking. Okay. And then there was another incident where um, I was with the guy and there was a strange truck that was coming into the area where all the protesters were yeah. and the truck drove past us. So we went to go, we went behind the truck to see what their license plate was to like let people know that there was a strange truck in the area. Hmm. So she said that was me putting everyone in danger. I mean, this just sounds so, like they're really trying to do whatever they can to try and defame you because of some personal slight. Well, yeah, and so that's why, like, I remember reading this and just feeling like I was gonna fucking throw up. Like, it was like being punched in the stomach. Like, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Uh, just fucking just, just seeing red and, like, so angry because I, she just turned me into this horrible... I mean, she said I put my fingernails before people's lives. Yeah, that's really fucked. Uh, you know... Uh, even if I had wanted to cut the acrylic off, one, I didn't have scissors. But two, if I cut it, the acrylic is going to be jagged. Like, there's literally nothing I can do. Like, I don't know if you can see this right here. It's broken yeah. off. Like, fucking jagged. Mm -hmm. there, there, I didn't have a lot of options, and I didn't even know well, this was going to You hadn't planned be... to go there originally. Like, this just I'm, seems like yeah. the maximum uncharitability that someone could give to you. Well, um, yeah. So, so sh and, you know, whenever she was like, oh, she had sex next to me, it quickly turned it oh okay. and then she finished it off by saying um that people shouldn't trust me and they shouldn't be around me and that i sexually mm. harassed her mm. that that by by yeah that that was sexual harassment um i didn't know anything i don't know anything about this girl's sexual history i don't know anything about any sexual trauma she has i don't know anything about her ptsd um even if i did know about her having previous sexual trauma in her past I don't know what her triggers are. I have previous sexual trauma. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have a previous us sexual do. trauma. A lot of us. Do. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what your triggers are. Like I don't have sexual triggers. I've been yeah. sexually assaulted multiple times. I don't have sexual triggers. And and so she was just kind of. She was like, yeah, she knew I had PTSD, and she did this anyway, and she just fucked right next to me, and it turned into. Um, I mean, she had me blocked, but like obviously, you know, I was able to see it. But so, um, you know, like I have an alt account, someone showed me whatever, and I was looking at these tweets and, and it was turning into the more people were engaging with it and sharing it and commenting on it. It went from, oh, she even said at one point in the thread, she was like, I didn't look and see what was happening, but I heard it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, she, so, but she said it was sex. And then later on, like four tweets down, yeah, yeah. she was like, it. Well, that's, and then how, the that's how you can weaponize. You see, and this is one of the things I hate about Twitter is that if people who are really good at being manipulative on Twitter want to, it's very easy to do that. It's very easy to have the plausible deniability of saying in my 120 tweet thread somewhere in here, I actually told the truth, but I opened it up, but with this, with a content warning rapist and then somebody's name or something along those lines. There's so many ways that you can manipulate this. This is one of the reasons why I get mad at people when they do things like clip chimping, when they do things like, um, I think there is a responsibility of people if you're gonna make a claim to actually have the evidence there and to provide the context, because otherwise, uh, this is the sort of shit that happens. And, and it's very easy if you have a platform to spin it into a rumor mill that can destroy people's lives and mental health. 
Well, so yeah, she, you know, she started it with saying that I, I did this, this thing, right? And then later on down, she was like, okay, well, I wasn't actually traumatized and I don't want you guys to go give her any shit, mm. but you know, I just want you guys to know that this is what happened. And um, it, uh, even, even on the, her original tweet thread, by the time I got to see it, because I, I had been asleep, so by the time I woke up and got to see it, there were already people on there being like, what, Merrick raped Sabby and Erica? Like, like it had already spun so Holy fucking, yeah, I, I saw a comment yeah. that said that. Um, it had already spun so fucking far out of control that people were talking about how I sexually assaulted her, how I need to be on a registry, I'm a sex offender, Jesus I'm a Christ. rapist. Um, Oh yeah, people to this day will come onto my tweets and talk shit and be like, "You're a fucking rapist," and it's like, chat. Remember when I talked about? Remember, remember my l big video that I've re-talked about three times about the Fall Guys thing and how it turns from one thing and then it becomes something completely else. And if you get people like major podcasters who decide to weigh in, um, that you can just you could basically just have a public uh, a public wish uh, witch burning situation going on. Yeah, there is a. I don't know if you. There was a discourse cycle this year about Fall Guys, and um, a writer wrote about um, playing Fall Guys with like a like a USB connected like butt plug, and uh, people turned that. It was just like literally like a whole like a, a think piece that was done for a sex website. And um, this person's a really good person, and, but they're like very openly trans and whatever. Um, and it became a giant dog pile of people um, accusing her of being a pedophile. Um, people accusing her of being a sex offender. Um, there was a Chapo guy. One of the Chapo guys said that she should go to prison for the rest of her life. Um, and there was literally thousands upon thousands of engagements from a random article that she was paid to write for some sex magazine. And it was just like, oh, yeah, this is perfectly okay behavior. And I did a big thing on it um, because I was just like, this is exactly this is the shit that I'm talking about. This is what happens is that um, people will get mad about something. And then all of a sudden there's these there's this sort of cascade of like acceptable like of like biases against a certain acceptable groups that let people fall into these moral panics. And when the moral panics happen, it's it's almost always targeted towards marginalized people um, of one form or another. And it's almost always ends up being nothing. The accusations resemble nothing of what was originally accused. And this sounds like exactly what happened in your situation as well, where it's just like someone with a platform and an ax to grind ignited a moral panic and nobody took the time to ever get to the bottom of it. Well, and I, I made it worse. Um, I did the dumbest fucking thing you could possibly do. Um, did you? I got mad. Well, I got mad. Well, yeah. I mean, that's and... a human response. Like, see, this is the thing. I, I hate... I really hate that um I really hate that we live in a uh in a paradigm where if you have a human response to being unjustly accused of something to being unjustly treated and not never given the chance to like contextualize if you're subjected to um like a fuckload of hate that like you're somehow supposed to feel like you're in the wrong for reacting like a like a normal like healthy human being. Yeah. Right? And I mean, this yeah. is something that you and I, I think, have in common, which is just like, um, I have, in fact, it's a meme in my chat that like one of the most common con like hate comments that I get all the time is like, you're such a bitch. You're so mean when people and I'm like, did you not watch the conversation? Did you not see this person accuse me of being like a man in a dress, uh, talk down to me, interrupt me like 15 <laughs> times? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. And then if I respond angrily, it's like, or if I respond firmly, it's like, oh, look at this uppity bitch. Look at this fucking cunt or whatever. You know what I mean? And I's I'm like, you know, man, that double standard's real, real clear, you know? And so, uh, and it makes me sad that that's like the, that seems to be still predominant in a lot of, um, a lot of lefty spaces, even, unfortunately. Yeah. It was, uh, to go. I basically was like, Oh god, I, I said the worst fucking thing. I was like, "She's a fucking bitch for this." That's what I tweeted. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like the worst thing I could have said, but my immediate reaction was like, "Fuck her." Yeah. How fuck dare she? Like, I yeah. knew what she was doing. You know, yeah. it was like really clear. Um, and I explained the whole situation. 
well as much as you can in like a fucking five tweet thread yeah and people just tore me to pieces for it yeah oh it was it was fucking awful um and um like like i even included the part about like i didn't even want her there i had a panic attack I, I was like, I, the only reason I stayed was because I called another creator and, and I just like tried to, to manage and get my way through it. And someone quote tweeted me and was like, um, why are you referring to other protesters as creators? What are you creating at a protest? Like, it, like just like the worst possible interpretations Literally of every, every single attempt that, to I, was, just find a way. that I was saying. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it's it was a bunch of other leftist women yeah. who I had seen online before, but who had never engaged with me. And, um, just fucking tore me to shreds. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, and a bunch of, a bunch of people were like, well, it's not her fault. How was she supposed to know what she was hearing? Like, um, you know, you need to be fucking apologizing. I can't believe you're doing this. This is so embarrassing. Like what the, you know, just people were so fucking horrible about it. And so, you know, I, I, I deleted the tweets and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to take a step away and I'm, you know, I'm not going to be on Twitter. I'm going to think about this. And, um, you know, and of course those tweets were filled with why the fuck haven't you apologized yet? What is wrong with you? You know, just like all that shit. And so I, um, I waited and then, uh, Xander reached out to me, actually. Hmm. Xander Hall reached out to me and he was like, okay, you're in some trouble, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and he was like, listen, I, read what both of you said i saw how you reacted and he was like i saw that she brought up your fingernails and uh i understand how acrylics work mm -hmm. and i think that she's trying to do something bad to you yeah i don't think that that's a normal thing a reasonable normal thing for someone to bring up this is some some something is up here talk to me yeah. and so i was like okay and i you know i i came on his his stream and i, I explained the situation and um he was like okay, yeah, this is basically what I expected it was going to be. Um, I pr thought it was going to be dumb. And he was like, listen, um, I have I have also been in trouble before. <laughs> so he, he was like, uh, I didn't know anything about the harem accusations, but, you know, oh, yes. we, we talked about it a little bit afterwards. And, and he was like, um, okay. He, he, like, helped me write everything out. He's like, here's what you're going to do. You're going to write a statement, and you're going to take every screenshot you have of, of all of your weird interactions with her and you're going to publish those. Yep. That's the only thing that you can do at this point. And then he was like, after that, walk away. Yep. Okay. All right. So I pulled all the screenshots of her being told that what she had posted about me was a lie and being like, well, I'm not retracting it until you delete the post. Yep. I got all of that. And then, um, I posted that and I mean, it didn't even get a fraction of the attention. Yeah, it that does But is but it doesn't matter as long as you got your story out there. And the fact yeah. of the matter is like, um, you know, I think that, I think that something that can be pulled from this is there's a lot of, uh, this is something that I sort of live by online, which is that, uh, comments are a fucking dime a dozen. Um, everyone can fucking dump their opinion in 10 seconds by slamming their face against the keyboard. Um, I don't really think particularly highly of, uh, of 90% of comments that I receive. Um, I know when people are doing it to support me and when they want to see me thrive. And I know when people are doing it because they actually care. For example, I've received comments on my videos that are very critical, but that are nonetheless in very good faith. And someone took the time to actually do that. And those are the types of people that I tend to reward with attention because I know they're trying to actually help me and actually care and whatever. Um, yeah. but there's a lot of haters out there. People who just want to be in on the, you know, the, the crabs in a bucket mentality, you know, they just want to be a part of the tearing somebody down or pulling somebody down that, that they perceive as being on top of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope we can fight against that. Um, you know, sort of part of the reason why, like I, I have even started doing the drama mama stuff is because i don't know like i'm tired of these cycles and i just want to be able to make a video that somebody can go and watch and have all the evidence laid out in one place so that people are less likely to be just manipulated by whatever personality they're bi most biased to and yeah. uh i don't know it's uh it is an it is a problem and i think um i think some like there are like this case is like what's what's happened with you is like holy fuck like this is clearly somebody weaponizing their um their sort of 
uh, what's the word? I don't know if the clout's the right word, but their respect, their their respectability in a certain community to be able to, um, you know, lead you lead lead people against you for because of some unknown personal bias. Like it really sounds like this person's got an axe to grind. Um, you know, and, and this is this is really fucked up. You know how long we've been talking? This is the beginning of what's happened to me. Holy this is God. what started. Yeah. This this happened in like September. So we're in December now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um she basically put an open season sign on my head. Yeah. And um it's been like an a relentless just never-ending stream of manufactured controversies since then, which I'm sure you've probably seen others seen of. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean she, like, this wasn't happening to me. I mean, I was getting a little bit of blowback here and there, but I mean, after she did that, I was fair game for everybody. Yeah. So what if what is what is the state of of your experience on Twitter right now if you don't mind me asking? What's what's the who's at what what do you feel like is the the is there still a lot of hate mobs going around? Is it people bringing old stuff? Is it people trying to bring new stuff? Um, um it's a little bit of both. Um, it just depends on like who is in touch with what drama. Mm -hmm. Some people only know about some things. Some people only know about older things. Some people only know about newer things. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, at this point, I have turned almost all of my notification settings off. Fair. Um, because it got to the point where um, I wasn't eating. Yeah. So I was like so stressed out that I I I just stopped eating. Um, and like my hair was coming out and, um, at one point I had decided I was going to kill myself because, oh, sorry, I um, I just, I, it, all of this horrible shit was happening. And then the dog pill incident happened. And after that, I was just like, dog pill? So I okay. So I posted a photo, um, oh. I have to post pictures. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I think I see what's what's going on here. Like the meme about like fucking their dogs and shit. So like, leftists did that to be... me. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I posted a photo and my dog was in it, and um, I had been taking uh, lingerie photos because my job is sex worker, so I have to post photos sometimes. And he came over to me while I was in a a, a top that's a little bit see through, and he laid his head on my chest, and I thought it was really cute. So I so I posted the pictures. And um, someone took a screenshot of it, and they posted it, and uh, just started talking about how um, it was dog fucking, dog pill shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, an account with, and that started to gain a fuck ton of traction. And then uh, these are all girls, by the way, doing yeah, this yeah, to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then another girl with uh, her name's like Brandy or something. I don't know. She has like hundred and forty thousand followers. Retweeted it, and wow. then uh, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, so a bunch of people started saying that I fuck my dog. Mm, nice. And, um, I, I guess that was supposed to be a haha -ha funny meme, but, um, I didn't think it was really funny. So, uh, I decided I was going to kill myself that night because I was like, if this is how people are going to treat me, then, I mean, how is this any different than incels doing? Actually, not only is this not dip, it's actually worse. Yeah. I would rather incels do this to me on some random forum where no one is ever going to see it, where like five dudes are going to see it and be like, -huh -huh. not um, everyone on Twitter that I will ever interact with has to know about this and see this now. Yeah. I mean, this tweet got thousands of likes yeah. and, and it just, I, I mean, how, how, how much more, could you, yeah. how, yeah. How much could you dehumanize me? And, and I was just like, if this is how people are going to treat me, um, this is someone I had never interacted with. Mm -hmm. Never. So I was like, I just, I don't, I was like, I don't, I don't want to live. Um, because, you know, this is on the internet forever now. So when, when, when employers go to like Google me, like that's going to be there. And, um, I, 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 I don't know when I'm going to be able to stop doing sex work. Yeah. I, I, I never got to go to college. I barely graduated high school. I didn't have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I have to do sex work for a while now. I'm also sick. I can't work a scheduled job. There are months out of the year where I can't even shoot porn because I'm so sick. I'm literally bedridden. 
So it's like, I have to be on Twitter. I have to still be doing this for who knows how many more years because I don't have a long-term plan yet. So I was like, if it's going to be like this for years, I just want to die. I, I was like, I can't, I can't handle this. Um, so I can, uh, I can sympathize with those types of feelings. That was a, a kind of a place I was in about a year ago myself. So I can feel how you yeah. would get to a place like that. It's uh, It can be really easy right now to lose sight of what type of future is possible um especially when there's that much hate coming to your direction and it and it feels like the entire world has singled you out and tar is targeting and in a lot of ways at least the world that you know the world that you can see around you um you know is doing that sort of thing um yeah, yeah. felt like like it's never gonna end you know yeah. um and it was just so cool yeah um and so you know my my relationship with twitter has been um just really volatile mm. um i don't i'm not safe yeah you know it's, it's not like a safe place for me but my uh instagram and my facebook don't drive traffic to the yeah. thing that makes me money so and and you know as as there are more and more crackdowns on on facebook and, and instagram they're pushing sex workers off their platform yeah. so um it's just i i've learned how to shut off a lot of notifications uh, i didn't know about that nobody nobody told me for months i figured yeah. out like a week ago a lot of people don't know they don't make it clear at all because it's not in yeah. their interest to make it clear you know yeah. so i turned a lot of those notifications off and i don't look at quote tweets um i used to have to read everything it used to get under my skin i had to know i had to see it and now i don't i don't read through the comments um i don't read quote tweets i never check my mentions mm -hmm. um if 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 I'm starting to get ratioed on something, because that still does happen pretty frequently, where people I'll just have any sort of take and people will lose their shit. Yeah. Um, they've got a preconceived notion of who you are. It happens. Yeah. So, I mean, I was so just talking about before you came on. I was just talking about how um, somebody fucking yesterday sent like almost thirty tweets at me. It was like twenty three or twenty four tweets at me, um, which was spurred off of them commenting on somebody complimenting me. So somebody was like, hey, I really love your stuff. Hope you don't catch like a whole bunch of hate from like like that that people who seem to be associated with the general Vasho sphere tend to get. Um, and uh, I was like, well, you know, I think there's some bumps. I think people are getting better at using Twitter over time. I have some hope for it. And then in comes hot as fuck. Just all this hate, like just talking down to me about, you know, how like literally mansplaining like, oh, here's how you can succeed. And I was talking about this and I was like, I responded by being like, I uh, didn't ask. I didn't ask for your feedback and what the fuck are you doing? Do you realize how weird it is for you to like tag me in on somebody else complimenting me and then like lay out your like entire opinion of how I'm like a garbage um, like clone of another creator who doesn't have an original thought in her head and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, how fuck that is. And they like responded really mad and got all fucking pissed off at me and whatever. And I'm just like, some people just literally don't know how to, they don't know how to engage. They don't know how to, behave and treat other people like with even a little bit of humanity or 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 benefit of the doubt and uh yeah screen just makes it worse. what's that <clears throat> the screen makes it worse yeah i it's think not it like does for sure and like twitter you know again twitter does not have those control like they don't teach you how to use their site they don't um they don't teach you how to um you know that like i mean they don't push forward like privating your account or anything it's it's this mess where they don't even know what their site is you know it's like it's an ad platform that also has a whole bunch of social stuff and you do connect with your friends but there's a whole bunch of other people that are connected to them who they might not even know you follow accounts of people you don't know at all it's like a parasocial mess and people can't a lot of people i think can't separate like t like how to work how to move around on twitter and how to engage and it's like shit it's like i don't even know sometimes sometimes i don't know if it's even possible to use the the, the platform well but maybe I, I like to think there's some way we can like make it better and make better communities and better networks on there but it is so messy that it's hard it feels hard well it's see and, and i think there's a like the anonymity allows for um some really vile shit and it allows for people to say and do whatever they want without any sort of consequences yeah. like um someone and it's it's funny you mentioned Bosch because i got into 
a lot of shit about Vosh because um, Vosh and I communicate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll communicate publicly. And um, people had been, for a while, people had been demanding I answer to why I communicate with Vosh. So um, I hadn't like disavowed him. So people were really, really, really upset about this. Um, and finally, it was like, the when Contra posted her video about voting, mm -hmm. I, I I said something about it, and basically I was like, "Listen, you know, I'm really scared of Trump." Mm -hmm. At the time, I was like, "I'm fucking terrified because um, I had an Oath Keeper push me in Louisville." Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you guys know who the Oath Keepers yes, are, but yep. um, I had one put his fucking hands on me, and I've seen. I'm seeing what's happening. Like I follow a lot of the news at the protests and, and I, I, I follow um, groups that keep tabs on white nationalists and you don't have to like Biden. I don't, but the monstrosity yeah. that Trump has emboldened, yeah. I think is bad. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, this was my, uh, uh, this was my take me. as well. Yeah. yeah. So basically I was like, I'm going to vote. I'm sorry. You know, and, and a lot of people were really, really upset with me. Oh, anarchists don't vote. They don't participate in electoralism. And I was like, okay, you know, I, I understand that. I'm, I'm still a baby leftist. I'm still really scared of what's happening right now. And I feel that I, I have to do what I can to get this monster out. And so, you know, I, I posted something about that and somebody tagged Vosh and Vosh was like, oh, you know, you know, proud of you, whatever. Cause he'd been pushing for electoralism. Yeah. And so, um, this uh, maybe I twinge the... every time I hear the term electoralism because Vosh uses electoralism incorrectly, and I'm just like, <laughs> electoralism isn't when you do a vote. That's just that's called voting. Electoralism is a, but it's okay. I get it. Yeah. So... Wait, wait. Is it... Electoralism is when you believe in the system of of actually voting and engaging with government to push along progress. I mean, electoral. Not... I mean, kind of like like when I when. When people say electoralism, usually what I think of is like, oh, like, um, you know, when you, yeah, when you, it is ultimately when you sort of believe in this system, being able to, you know, at being the proper way to lead forward government. But I don't think that voting means you're an electoralist. I think that means you voted because there was strategic value in voting. You know what I mean? Like what I, when yeah. I think an, a, somebody who would be like somebody who believes in electoralism, I think Pete Buttigieg, he believes in the system. He believes this system is the way that it should be. There might be little sure. tiny reforms here and there, but that's what I believe that that's like, as far as I've always understood it, electoralism. And now it just seems like people use electoralism to be like electoralism definition when you do a vote. And I'm like, no, like what the fuck? Like the people of all types can go do a vote. Like, do you really think I'm going to refuse to vote on like a, a like in my area, there was a a vote on the ballot to reform the constitution of my county to no longer use the term citizen and instead to consider all people living here to be relevant people who matter, whether they're documented or not, whether they're a citizen or not. You think I'm not going to vote on that? You think I'm not going to go vote even though even though I don't believe in electoralism? In fact, I'm opposed to electoralism? No, there's strategic value to voting. And I just am like, the, the essentialization drives me wild. And I'm not mad at, like, I don't think Vosh is doing this. It's just like the term electoralism has become like when you go do a vote. And I'm just like, no, that's not what it means. Vosh is not an electoralist. I don't think anybody who's been called an electoralist is actually like an electoralist. Like, again, Pete Buttigieg, you know, George Bush, Barack Obama, those are electoralists. They're people who literally believe that the electoral system is just more or less in its current form. Not like people who think there's a strategic value to voting at certain times of uh, anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's really frustrating, and and this was something that you know I got a lot of pushback for was mm -hmm. that I was gonna vote. Um, but so so you know Vosh was tagged into the chat, and um, someone spammed the clip at me of him saying the N word uh, in the kill stream debate. Yeah. And this is like the hundred millionth fucking time this has happened. And I finally was just like, you know what? Stop. Yeah. Like, you don't get to decide who I'm allowed to communicate with. I'm sorry, but this is crazy. Like you people don't, <laughs> you people. Yeah. Um, I actually got in trouble for saying you people. <laughs> um, like 
you oh no that was a real thing oh i, I know i know i know yeah. <laughs> but um so i was like listen y'all don't own me yeah. you don't get to decide what i do and what i don't do and who i talk to and who i don't talk to and when i talk to them and when i don't i feel like a lot of people on twitter have felt like they own me mm -hmm. um and it's been really fucking frustrating um and so I just kind of like, like I snapped at this person and I was like, this is fucking ridiculous that like you're making me answer for this. And they were, and, and they were like, well, he's a fucking racist and you're supporting a racist. And if you continue to talk to him, then you're okay with racism. And you know, you're a ra you're not, you're a racist too. Like basically like, it just got crazy. And I was like, you know what? This is bullshit. And I basically was like, um, they sent me another clip mm -hmm. and they were like, when is it okay for white people to say the N word? And I was like, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. That's not my place to say. I'm very uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a good idea for me to answer that question. Yep. And they were like, well, I'm not trying to trip you up. I'm really not. I'm really not. I really want to have a genuine discussion with you. And I was like, no, you're going to fucking quote tweet me. Or you're going to screenshot me. You're trying to trick me. And they were like, no, no, no. I promise I'm not. Listen, I, I like you. I've supported you. I just, I want to understand where you're at. And I was like, okay, fine. I don't think that Vosh is a horrible racist. He has hours and hundreds of hours of anti-racist content. He debates racists. Like, I don't think Vosh hates black people. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, I think that what he said was not okay. I would never fucking say it. I'm uncomfortable with it. I don't think it was a good choice. Um, I think he could have done literally anything else in that situation, but he didn't. Stop, what? I'm gonna stay quiet here. I'm not going to say shit. You ain't canceling me today, motherfuckers. I think he could have said anything else in that situation. And Vosh made the worst choice he possibly could. Optically, probably for people's feelings, mm -hmm. he just didn't do, he didn't do the smart thing, right? So that wasn't good. Don't think he should have done it. But I don't think that Vosh hates black people. I'm sorry, I just don't. Yeah. And and maybe there's something that I don't know. Maybe there's some clip somewhere of Vosh going, I hate black people. I love to, oh God, I can't say this. People are gonna clip this. Maybe there's some like fucking something somewhere of Vosh doing terrible shit that I don't know about. Oh, I can tell you where a whole bunch of those are. Um, there, It's called uh, Out of Context Vosh. There's another one called Out of Context Demon Mama. You'll have a lot of fun in there. You'll get that. Okay. I'm quite sure there's going to be a clip of there of me doing my, my German voice, my <laughs> shitty German accent. So, um, but, but so basically I was just like, look, this is fucking ridiculous. I think that he has done some dumb things but that he is trying to be a better person, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they were like, just, you know, well, you got to say it. You have to say it. And 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 they were like, when is it okay for a white person to say the N word? Like, you have to decide. You have to say it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then they put another clip because there's another clip where he says, um, if you've been in my chat, you know this. In my private life, I say the N word. So there's a clip of him saying that. And at the time... I was under the impression that he was quoting Destiny because do you remember when there was that huge fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. scandal where yeah, Destiny I think was like, I yeah. feel like that that clip was I mean I'm so I've seen so many clips now I feel like that one was from the Destiny thing but <laughs> that's what I'm saying there's yeah. so many fucking clips yeah. but so so I was under the impression that he was quoting Destiny so I was like um Merrick, would you say no? Who, whoever is named Donald Trump in your child is a horrible question. They have the chug tag. You don't have to. You don't have to pay attention. That's why it's a, as a garbage bin tag, so you know okay. who you can ignore. <laughs> okay, um, but but so you know, um, I was like, I was like, listen, hold on, um, you know, if if we're gonna claim that he's racist because of this clip that you're showing me. Racism depends on the context, right? Mm -hmm. So if the context of the situation is he's quoting someone else, obviously that's not racist. If it's not him that's like, oh yeah, I say it. If he's saying somebody else does that, then it fucking matters. And I was like, look, I'm withholding judgment on that. So then this person kept pressing me and kept pressing me. And they were like, no, when is it okay for white people to say the N-word? And I was like, I don't know, acting maybe? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I was like, listen, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't want to get pinned down saying the, the one or two times where white people could say the N word. A, a time 
there's no malice fucking acting maybe academia maybe i've also heard people say they don't like it then i don't know i'm not the arbiter of this so this was like this super fucking high stress thing and they wouldn't leave me alone and other people were jumping on and so people took the screenshot of me being like i don't know a situation where there's no malice and then me t- and then the me responding to the clip being like look dude racism depends on the context like Absolutely if does. i'm gonna judgment on this they took those two screenshots disregarded everything else mm-hmm. didn't take a screenshot of the thing where i was like i don't think it's my place to decide when white people can say the n-word i don't know disregarded all the stuff about me being like hey i think this is him quoting destiny Mm -hmm. and then threw those two screenshots up and this was like a week after the savvy thing and they were like oh merrick's having a hell of a time guys Mm -hmm. and that shit went viral too and then somebody somebody took somebody got on their alt account Mm -hmm. changed their alt account to look like my account changed their changed their username took the picture and then sent themselves a bunch of messages with the n-word and a bunch of racial slurs took screenshots of it posted it up and was like oh my god why would she say this to me yeah no it's the classic classic framing yeah um fuck yeah 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 you think so, there's some psyop um, shit? Oh, I, I definitely, I mean, people for all, for, I mean, I'm going to do a stream on it eventually, but if you don't know anything, just look at, look at the history of, of CIA infiltration to American leftist projects. And you'll understand that this is the same exact shit. I'm not kidding you. The com- the communist party of America was taken down by a fake pamphlet that was, that was written by the CIA. And it was literally designed to make people argue because it had literal contradictions in it. They distributed it among members of the American communist of the American communist party. And, um, and, and then people fought over it and it caused an internal schism because they couldn't figure out who actually wrote it or who it was. And they accused each other of lying, destroyed the party. It was written by the CIA. So yeah, just so you know, like, and this is why I have my general rule on Twitter. Every single time I receive a notification that's negative or contentious or whatever, I sit there and I go, is there a possibility this person is 14? Yes, there is. Is there a possibility this person could be a CIA agent? Yes, there is. Okay, there we go. Next, next comment. Boop. There you go. Swoop. Just throw it away. Um, also, I have. I, I'm a little fond of this one, but I understand not everyone's on it. But it's the. It's this. It's this routine. You know, if somebody. Um, somebody wants to ask me a question, and I think they're asking in bad faith. I just do this at them. I say, "Hey, fuck you. Get the fuck out of my face." Yeah. I'm a spicy yeah. bitch. I, I've been known for being a spicy bitch. Um, but you know. I don't know. I don't have a lot of time for people's stupid garbage bullshit. Like, here's the thing. The funny thing is, got a lot of dirt on people. Out there, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of dirt on just about anybody. Um, damn, I, mean, I sure seem to know a lot of people. I sure seem to know a lot of real cancel happy people who hobnob around with some people who've done some real fucked shit. Just saying, a lot of these people have a real double standard going on, and they're real happy to jump on and try and cancel everybody else. But, uh, woo, they sure do love kissing up to those uh, genocide deniers. Um, you know, that sort of shit. Um, I mean, and usually you don't even have to look very far. Like, that's the thing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm an asshole. What can I say? Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's really fucked to me that like this has become the way that i don't know a lot of it just reminds me of tumblr you know like just people whose entire social groups and and some in some ways it's tragic because it's like you know a lot of these people are isolated they're lonely and whatever um and it leads to them like like leaning into a fandom or a certain online community and their whole life becomes that but the thing the fact of the matter is there are fucking terrible people out there there are people out there who just behave completely abusively and are willing to harm other people. And like, that's just a reality. We have to be more, we have to be willing to engage in more scrutiny of claims that are made against people. Don't just fucking parrot shit that you see. This is the rumor mill and it's been turned, it's been cranked up to like fucking, it's gone plaid. It's going ludicrous speed. It's, it's, it's surpassed ludicrous speed. It's like, it's like when we enter into the, the internet era, you know, always, you know, yeah, always make sure you have fucking, yeah, keep your receipts. And also, if people are being a fucking piece of shit, sometimes the best thing you can do is tell them to fuck off and then just block them. 
I mean, sometimes that's it. Like, I mean, I had a, um, now this is nothing compared to even close to the, to the, um, level that like, that you've dealt with, but this is just a funny anecdote. This one dude, um, who now has me blocked. I didn't even block him. Um, but he has me blocked. He like clip chimped the shit out of me. Um, in fact, he went so far as to, um, change the order of things that I said. Um, so like he took two clips and he put one first, which actually happened second. And the second one first, you know, so he switched their location and then listed them as people as proof, as receipts of me saying a certain thing. And then I, I said, Hey, did anybody actually click on and watch those? Or did you just assume he had the receipts because there were two links there? It turns out almost nobody watched them. Um, and if you watch them, he literally cuts it in the middle of my sentence to make it sound like I'm saying one thing. Whoa! Sorry, I gotta shout this one out. Uh, Somniostatic, holy fucking shit. Oh, incredibly wow. generous, $150. Oh, You're both shit. awesome. I hope Merrick finds a way to get rid of all this bullshit. Stay strong, our empire grows. Uh, not an empire. It's not an empire, TM, dis disavow. This was a very <laughs> heart-shattering and heartwarming conversation. Much love to you, Merrick. Uh, thank you, Somniostatic. Holy fucking shit. Holy God. Jesus fucking Christ. Thank you. That is incredibly generous of you. You just awesome. bought my dinner. Um, thank you very much. More than my dinner. You bought like 10 dinners. Um, thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, fuck, uh, where, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, this guy, the fucking clips. And then I just was like, debate me. If you really believe I'm like, if you re first of all, you've got the wrong stereotype. He was like saying, I'm like a North Korea apologist. And I was just like, mm, okay, not wrong, wrong tendency. I'm not an ML. I'm not like a North Korea Juche person, whatever. Um, and then secondly, like you don't have the evidence for that. And so I called him out and eventually got to the point where he was getting ratioed because I was just like, if you believe it, this is true, then come, sure. can come on my show. And he wouldn't come on my show. Eventually I got a third party to get us on. And I literally just, before I primed my stream by, before I debated, I just played both the clips and then I played the actual context. And then we went right into the debate and I just was like, I'm not here to fucking debate you about shit. You're a liar. You tried to lie about me. You tried to make me look bad. If you wouldn't mind, Dylan, you know, because it was on Dylan's show, I'm like, do you mind if I play these two clips? Played the clips that he did. Played the context. There you go. You're a fucking liar. You're dishonest as shit. And he was like, oh, you're dumb, blah, 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 and all this shit. <laughs> and, then, and then never talked to him again. And it was fine, you know? Like, it was annoying as fuck. It made me mad. It sucks that another creator was willing to engage in such dishonesty. But sometimes you just have to, like, Sometimes you just gotta go hard on somebody. Though, like you actually got justice in that situation. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's hope that uh, let's hope that the future uh, is is a little different uh, in in your engagements online. Um, I I sure hope. I mean, I'm I have a feeling that you're gonna gain a couple of followers from me. I don't have a huge audience, but um, oh wow! Thank you so much for those gifted five subs. Jesus Christ! Thank you so much. Wow, a lot of generosity. Um, That's awesome. yeah, but it seems like you got a lot of fans in my chat. So I don't know, maybe we'll get some more positive influence on, on your, uh, on your Twitter and channels and whatnot. And, uh, I, like, I don't know. I, there's like a lot of... I feel like there's one, I feel like there's one last thing that I should ha I should address Please. because there's like one last controversy. Absolutely. Let's do it. We um, got time. Do you know about the India situation? No. Wait, wait. What do you mean when you say the India situation? Um, so, okay, I had a viral tweet okay. about, um, I had, uh, this is the, this is the thing that if, if someone was going to get mad at me, this is probably like the, the thing that I actually got the closest to doing. Okay. Um, so you know how there was that worker strike in India um, on the 26th where yeah, it was, it was like 200 really recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was like 250 million people. Ow, don't bite me. Uh, we're striking and they were you know, and that's, I think that's the largest strike we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I think, One of the biggest I mean, that's, ones, yep. yeah. 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 And so, um, I thought this was like a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that 250 million people organized on this level yeah. to come together to, to fight for their rights. I mean, that's fucking awesome. Right. So I thought this was super cool. Um, and I was trying to look for information about this. I'd just been hearing like streamers and, and people on Twitter talk about it. So I was trying to look for, for information about this and I wasn't finding anything. I was Googling it. I couldn't, nothing. Yeah. Um, and so I, I went on to Twitter and I was like, um, how crazy is it that if it wasn't for leftists on Twitter, I wouldn't know about this India strike at all. Like none of the mainstream Western outlets covered yeah. it. Yep. 
And uh, this Twitter went viral. And this is my first viral tweet, the only one I've ever, well, I guess I've had other viral tweets, but like this was liked like a hundred thousand times. Like, so, so we got a lot of attention and um, in, I made this thread where I was like showing uh, screenshots of looking through Google and trying to find media outlets that would cover it. Mm -hmm. And I had this whole big thing where I was like, this media outlet isn't doing it. That media outlet isn't doing it. And I was talking about Western media all throughout it. Um, and then, uh, I went to sleep and when I woke up, it had been going viral. And so I was like, this is fucking cool. Right? Like, holy shit. Um, and it was like 19 hours into this, this happening. And my husband was like, I don't know, you should probably put your OnlyFans on there. Like this is getting a ton of attention, you know? Um, like that's that, and I was like, well, that's what you do with viral tweets, right? Like everyone does this. Yeah, so I was like, okay. It's a meme, yeah. Uh, so so uh, I, I I put mine on there, and um, people were really, really, really unhappy. Really, 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 really unhappy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was fine because. I was talking about like media outlets Mm -hmm. and I thought this was a good thing, but I guess people decided that I was making money off the exploitation of brown people is that's how it was phrased. Um, So a a bunch of people got really, really, really fucking mad. And I guess this girl who lives in London, who is an, uh, an Indian, she's Indian. Mm -hmm. That's her her ethnicity or whatever she was like this is fucking disgusting i can't believe you would do this like this is so fucking awful and i was just like no like no this wasn't this isn't fucking awful like i'm not exploiting people i can understand if i can understand if i made a tweet where i was like um indian people are starving and they're dying and they're not paid anything and this terrible thing and that terrible thing and this terrible thing and all of this horrible shit but the tone of my tweets and the content of my tweets was like, this is fucking awesome. This is great. Western media doesn't want you to fucking know about it because they don't want us to organize. They're hiding shit from you. Um, and I, I thought that we were celebrating this. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think that this was like, I didn't, I, I don't know. I, I didn't think I was doing something bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Here's my my opinion on this kind of thing is that lefties are, um, and sorry, everyone, here's the thing that's going to get me canceled, but lefties on Twitter are fucking stupid when it comes to actually thinking about um, how people can sustain themselves. They don't actually give a shit. They're mostly just either jealous or themselves have never been poor in their entire lives. And so they don't know what it's like to not have any money and have to be like running a business or not even a business, like just trying to get enough money. People fucking do this all the time. People plug their shit on the bottom of all kinds of tweets. I saw protest shit with people plugging their little business uh, for, you know, oh, I make Black Lives Matters t-shirts or whatever. Here you go. Come buy my shirts. People do this shit all the time. A lot of people are really struggling under capitalism right now. I, I don't think people like, I think some Twitter lefties spend so much time talking about how everyone's suffering under capitalism that they forget that there's people suffering under capitalism. And sometimes that means you have to take opportunities to say, Hey, I'm here too. If you liked my thread and you're all retweeting it and you want some, this thing, here you go. I don't have any fucking problem with that. People are just weird and puritanical. And half the time, again, it's either because they're jealous because they wish it was their only fans posted there or they have never had to work like they've never had to like like save up a day in their life they like have some fucking programming job or some shit or they're an heir and they're like i'm so pure in my principles you know it's like no you have a fucking house you have your bills taken care of you don't have a sickness like fuck off like what the fuck are you talking about people are just ridiculous that's one of the ones where i would have been like that would have been the that would have gotten to this for me you know what i mean because it's like what the fuck it's twitter what the fuck that's what you're um, supposed to do. It's rule number three of the imps code. Promote. That's what you do. People people were saying that I was um, 
basically that I, you know, again and again, it was, oh, you're making everything about you and, and you're, you're profiting off the suffering of, of third world people and, and, you know, people of color. And I was just like, man, I, I feel like you guys are having to change the tone and the context of my tweets. Um, because to like fit this like worst case sort of interpretation. And I don't know if you know who, who what McLean's is. They're a media outlet. No, I don't. They're like a, like a hundred and fifty year old media outlet. Damn, I've um, never heard of them. Who Megalol? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, <laughs> I don't even know who they are. They're, so, they're they're Canadian, but oh, okay. um. <laughs> I mean, just... wait, I can't laugh at that. My partner is Canadian. Oh shit, um, fuck, <laughs> fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, go ahead. <clears throat> but um, so I guess the like one a co contributing editor of that went on like a three-day rant about how I am a rancid pile of dog shit and sending people to my, he has like 60,000, 70,000 followers, mm -hmm. went on a three-day rant about me and my husband because of the India tweets Jesus and Christ. basically was like say, talking about how I'm like subhuman and I'm a rancid pile of dog shit and I'm the worst Who's person this? in the fucking um, his name is Anthony something. Let's see. Um, I have him blocked, oh. but yeah, and he sent a bunch of fucking people my way to attack me. And then when my husband started to defend me, um, he started like quote tweeting my husband to people too. And like people started speculating about the state of my marriage and whether I was like still married or not. And um Wow. It was fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, he's the contributing editor of McLean's. And so my husband tried to get into contact with McLean's and they, um, he was trying to do it through tweets at first because I, I guess he he hasn't bothered to call corporate yet, but they're just like deleting any any tweet that he comments on where he's like, hey, I need to get a hold of you guys. Like, this is not good. They just delete their fucking, oh, cat. you can't do that. Kitty, what the fuck? Kitty wanted some pork. Yeah, joke. Um, <laughs> the yeah, they're just like deleting any tweets. Shut up, Ed. Um, deleting any tweets that he comments on. But yeah, like it's it's crazy the amount of like shit that has come my way. People were like, "You're so fucking disgusting for doing this. This is selfish. This is awful." Like people were like, "This is the worst fucking thing you could do." Like I mean, it was. Fuck. It's been really intense. Um, yeah, that but whole I, New York I, Post thing happened too recently. Is a couple of weird yeah. weird trends with that isn't it almost like some people have some really fucking weird problems with women and especially women who uh especially women who uh are are sexually liberated and 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 uh have taken their fate into their own hands so to say yeah 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 damn yeah fuck i felt i felt bad about that because like think that i was doing anything wrong but the response to it was so insane like i've never seen um viral tweets about me mm -hmm. until that incident there was there was one tweet that was liked like fifty thousand times or something and it was uh just people mocking me for that and i don't know i mean a bunch of people went onto my like free only fans and my I, I like i finally had to shut my dms like a bunch of people went on my free only fans to like lose their mind at me and Jesus fucking Christ. Um, that was that was where the uh the grifter thing came from because one of the uh the first people who started to respond to the the tweet that i put up on my only fans were hindu nationalist men oh. uh modi supporters oh, and great were, great great leftists there yeah well, they, they were really fucking mad and so yeah. the, you know they were like you know you're a dumb white whore like just like threatening me and like saying all this crazy shit and that was who i was like go ahead fucking spread my tweets like all you're gonna do i was like this isn't my first rodeo like all you're gonna do is make me money because i was talking to the the guys who were like threatening me essentially so people clipped just that screenshot yeah. and they were like that's proof that she's a grifter yeah you can always do a uh, a, a nice compilation of the full context because uh, sometimes that'll change people's minds if you show them what was actually being said to you and who those people are but sometimes it doesn't a lot of times it doesn't you know, sometimes it's just like, I mean, again, if you were to listen to, if, if you were to listen to the, 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 the comments I got on, on my uh, destiny debate, um, which was hundreds out of my v videos, which usually get like a couple hundred views, you know what I mean? I had thousands of views on that one. Um, and it's just like, this person is an unhinged bitch. You shouldn't be allowed near public life. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's like, okay, cool. All right. See ya. Uh, damn. Where have I heard that one before? Oh, nothing new here. It's just old shit. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. People are fucking 
it's a, it's actually wild some of the shit that people will engage in based on like this weird sense of like parasocial entitlement it, it's really fucked and yeah i mean i don't know for what it's worth my opinion on that is like i don't fucking care i will never there is nothing in the world like i can't imagine anything like i can imagine maybe at the worst going ooh, that was kind of a cringy plug and then moving on with my day but maybe <laughs> i just have i don't know maybe i just have maybe i'm just a bad leftist who like has bigger things to think about than whether like this person who i have a parasocial hate relationship with did the exact right order of tweets or whatever i don't fucking know <laughs> jesus fucking christ you yeah. see i felt like like i felt like i'm crazy because I mean, that's what they do, right? They get to gaslight you, right? They make you say that you did things that you didn't do. And well, and I mean, I've heard that someone was arguing with me the other day that I'm a turf. They were like, "Yeah, you fucking hate trans people," and I was like, kitty. "No, I don't." Oh, like, no, kitty, no. Hey, no. <laughs> but I mean, it's just like he's he's Yamato. Can we but, get I mean, some Yamaros in chat, please? <laughs> people will tell me that I'm a racist and that I'm a turf and, and I mean, just all this crazy shit. And like, cause at what point do you go, okay, is it everyone else or is it me? Yeah. Because people who go, Oh, it's everyone else. It's not me. That's the worst. Like those people are always projecting, right? Like, like I don't want to be that person ever. Yeah. So when I explain the situation yeah. fully to people one-on-one, -on -one, almost everyone i've ever sat down and like actually talked about this with is like oh wow that's that's a lot but then when i'm interacting with people on twitter they i feel like like people will tell me that i'm a narcissist they're like yo you just can't take any responsibility for anything because you're a fucking narcissist and it's Arm like chair psychology yeah ah. <laughs> like i don't know if it's, if it's really i'm just fucking wrong about everything and i have to ask my husband every day i have to be like am i a terrible person yeah like are all these things that they say about me true? Because when you hear it over and over and over and over and over again, you're like, wow, I must be awful. No, I mean, well, here's the thing. Like, uh, he, there's a couple of things that I would say on that particular issue, which is one is like, um, you, it's very easy for like social media to distort like our ability to kind of predict like who's saying what i actually had a moment like this um in fact i can tell you firsthand so this is about a day after the destiny debate um i got a call from my cousin um me and my cousin kind of disagreed on things um and uh then i was reading i had been reading a whole bunch of comments that entire day a lot of fucking ne negativity a lot of you're an unhinged bitch like how the fuck do you do this this is trash you're doing a bad job you're making things worse for trans people by being in public stuff like that um and um and like i was sitting there and i was like i don't know did i fuck it up did i fuck it up and i i had to actually take a minute and just like sit down and just think back okay let's review and then later i ended up watching it again to sort of put my fears to rest and i was like no i totally didn't fuck that up i totally killed that shit and it's like um sometimes there's this concept i came up with this was long before i ever had any sort of public platform um when i was dealing with this was actually before i even came out um i realized that like i am someone who judges my i judge myself incredibly hard i hold myself to really fucking weird ass standards it's just the way i grew up um i've yeah. spent most of my life like running away from a sense of guilt of like that i'm a failure that i'm whatever and so i came up with this sort of um analogy of like a mental equation and the thing that i do in my mental equation is i know that i have a natural predisposition to thinking that i'm a giant piece of shit like at pretty much all times and like thinking poorly of myself and when I realized that, 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 that like all of my calculations in this equation had like this negative 40 on the, on the side or whatever of like, I'm always going to be harsher on myself than I probably should be. I go so far as to like, I often would efface myself. Like I would, I would erase my own needs in order to be sure that I wasn't stepping on the needs of other people. It's happened to me multiple times in my life. I know this is a factual thing. And then like as I started to hear, like, there was negative feedback and stuff, I had, it became very hard for me to figure out, well, like, am, w what's the truth here? And I realized I need to calculate 
for that natural negativity I have towards myself. And over time, I've gotten better at as I'm doing my mental calculations go, okay, well, don't forget that you have this tendency your entire life to assume that you failed, to assume that you've done something wrong. Make sure you're taking that into calculation before you come to a final conclusion. And, um, and you know, sometimes that does help. Sometimes it helps for me to go, yeah, I always think I've done a bad job. Maybe I should rethink this again and, and pretend that, you know, and like give myself that extra 40 points and see if I come out. And if I still, after doing that, if I still think I did a bad job, maybe I did. But if I give myself that little tiny benefit of the doubt, knowing that for most of my life I was depre severely depressed and didn't believe myself worth living, you know what I mean? If I, if I adjust for that and I do think I did a good job, maybe I was adjusting too negatively as I tend to do. And I think that's a way that you can sort of like, um, you can sort of work your way out of these types of situations. And it is hard because again, like I've been like literally gaslit in a relationship before, which like the actual type of gaslighting when like a per when like a, somebody you trust and love lies to you about real things that happened. And when you say, Hey, this is what happened. They go, I don't remember that. Or that's not how I remember it. And you start to doubt your own sanity and you start to lose track of who you are and what you are as you become increasingly attached to somebody who will forget an event in which they were harsh and horrible to you like that and pretend that they don't even remember it. They'll just say, I don't remember that happening. I think you're making that up, even though you remember it and it happened and you're hurting from it and it stings, you know? And like, I think there's an effect of that online of like people don't know anything about you, but they make assertive statements because who knows who the fuck they are or what they're dealing with at the time. And I think sometimes you just like, it helps to, again, have that structure in your mind of like, okay, here's the big equation of all the things I'm thinking about while I'm self critiquing and while I'm trying to improve myself. And I know that like, say, for example, some of the things I would plug into this sort of like mental equation, like, okay, on a Destiny video, I know Destiny's fans really like Destiny. There's people who've been watching Destiny for f for 10 years who will think very poorly because I was, you know, aggressive with him like I am with everybody else, you know what I mean, or whatever. Um, and so I need to calculate those things in, but I also need to remember that like, hey, there's a part of me that always wants to please everybody. There's a part of me that will the same thing that made me like a workaholic in the past, the same thing that made me do everything for, for like my bosses or whatever at the time when I didn't really realize how abusive a lot of work environments are, that same thing that made me want to do the best because I was worried that like I wasn't good enough or whatever, that I have to remember that that calculation still exists. And it's still very possible. There's times where I go, ooh, fuck, I fucked that up. And then I go and think about it and I go, yep, I definitely still fucked that up. Um, but... You know, most narcissists, in my experience, never even bother. They don't even think about it. They just fly from the seat of their pants. They never do that internal calculation. They are always right. And I think there's this tendency for people to try and convince you that you're one thing. Again, it's like this, this like social media gaslighting where it's like, oh, you're a narcissist. You're this. Well, you don't know anything about my life. You've never talked to me. You've just seen one video or one tweet of mine and you've come to all these conclusions. And I think it's, it's important and okay to remember that and to hold that as true. You know what I mean? Like I take comments I get online as again, they're a dime a dozen. Um, and you know, I know there's a bias towards remembering the negatives. That's just how human brain works where we try to avoid negative things. But then there's also this whole idea of like, I mean, just remember like at the end of the day, unless this is like a personal friend calling you and telling you, they probably don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They probably don't know shit about you. They don't know anything about your past. And that is a perfectly valid reason to, to like lower the valid, the, like not the validity, but lower the, um, the like, like yeah. depth of, of, of which you're willing to let a critique go, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I, I just, you know, I, I feel like I, I really, um, that resonates with me a lot. What you said, I'm, I'm so. I'll always blame myself. Like mm -hmm. if there's a conflict between me and someone else, I'll always blame myself. Mm -hmm. And it's when I see these comments from people, when I see people say what you did was selfish and disgusting, like I feel this like cold pit in my stomach yeah. and I have to go, wow, did I really just do something that fucking awful? Because I don't, I don't want to be a bad person. Yeah. I don't want to hurt you know and, and I, I feel like people respond to me on Twitter like I hurt people mm -hmm. and it just feels so fucking guilty 
Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, like something just... else to remember too is that like um, something that could be helpful to remember, and this is kind of an adage I remind myself, and this goes not just for my own interactions but for other people, is that a, a, a crime is is you know with a few exceptions like planning murder, but a crime is only as bad as the as the harm that's done. Um, is it possible for people to be harmed by tweets? Absolutely. But um, at the end of the day, they're still tweets. Like there's only there's a limited amount of harm that can be done from a single tweet. There's a limited amount of harm that could be done from a from a twit from a single Twitter account. And so um, barring super extreme options like, I don't know, like you steal uh, somebody's personal information, leak it on Twitter, like barring something like that, the chance that you've actually done any meaningful harm with a tweet is really low. And so at the end of the day it's okay to assign like most Twitter behaviors to like, Hey, this is not all that important. It's not real life at the end of the day, there's real people involved here, but you know, there's only so much that you can really like what at the worst, at the end of the day, you posted cringe, right. And to live is to cringe. Like <laughs> it never, I'd never get, you know, none of us would ever get anything done. If we, if we let, if we let like random fuckheads on the internet paralyze us, you know, and let them, let their opinions matter all the time. There's so many people. It's so easy. Right now, I could go onto Twitter and in less than 10 minutes, I could say a whole lot of really hurtful things to a lot of people. <laughs> and it would probably hurt their feelings, but that just shows you how cheap and easy it is to, to spit out a bunch of comments, a bunch of hateful comments on the internet. Like, it, it takes so much more to pre to to attack, to connect with someone, to give them their, your, your meaningful feedback, to to do a response video, even to, to have a conversation or a debate. All of these things are better ways of engaging a tweet, a Twitter comment or a YouTube comment, even more so are so lazy. They're so simple. They're so cheap that at the end of the day, even if there's some truth in them, they're still just a YouTube comment and it can feel like a lot of people are yelling at you, but that's, I mean, it literally could just be some angry 14 year old who like their mom just did, you know, deleted their Pornhub account because they got caught, you know, and now they're just taking it out on you because they were watching destiny and you debated against destiny or something. You know what I mean? Like you can't yeah. always know it. And then like, okay, so what, like, what's the worst thing that happens? You go and you did a bad debate and you looked dumb one time in your life. Welcome to my life. Do you know what I did before I was a streamer? Do you know what I did before I had a public presence? I bet I was way more dumb than I've ever been publicly here. People have been dumb for all kinds of reasons. You know that there are people who've shit their pants at school? Ooh, that's got to live with you forever. I've never done that. I'm clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's one of those things. But, I mean, I do think one of the things that's really great is, um, like, it's really important to have – and I think that it's really hard because like in your case, it sounds like um, like your your growth on the platform just blew up so fast. That there's no possible way that it can, um, you know, that it can, you know, that you can keep up any sort of like uh, like community out of that sort of growth. It's just it's so explosive and so fast and your exposure is to so many more people. But it is really important to um, have people that you can, you know, connect with like on a social level. Like, I mean, I have other streamers who I'm friends with, who I would consider my friends, people who, um, fuck like, like Chud logic, you know, uh, you might know Chud logic. I don't know if you do. Um, I feel like he did a video on you at one point, uh, positive. Really? Assure, yeah. Positive. I assure you. Um, he's, he's a, like, um, about the same size as I am Twitch streamer. Um, yeah. <laughs> Some people call him pedo clowns, man, because there is a clip of him in which he was like, who let the pedo clowns into the circus? And it was just like <laughs> that went viral and whatever. But um, but Chud Logic is somebody who um, is somebody I consider a friend. And if I feel like I'm like lose like I'm losing touch, I feel like I can always go and talk to him and he'll give me a fair shake. You know what I mean? Like he'd be like, hey, yeah. maybe you did this wrong, but here's this. And there's a lot of people who I would believe, like now I'm in a place in my life where I feel like there's a lot of people I could do that. Not only my partners, of course, they have a bias, but there's also, you know, coworkers in this space. I call them coworkers, but, you know, colleagues and even people in my community who I feel would be the first people to give me, to let me know if I would, if I fucked up. You know what I mean? Like I have mods and shit who would, who would tell me if I fucked up. And, um, I, yeah. That's what I need is I, I need to be able to form some sort of community. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why I want to start streaming is because it feels right now like I'm just floundering and I don't have, I mean, I have a couple of people that have like stuck by me through things, but I don't have a community that has my back. So when people start to attack me and ratio me and dogpile me, mm -hmm. 
it's just me out there yeah and and people there's only like three people that know the lore oh you better go yeah, outside yeah. it's really hard to get into that yeah um and yeah i i just uh I, I have like one person right now that I trust because I I've had other creators that I've like bread tubers that I've trusted and told information to and then they've gone into their podcasts and had anti trafficking uh, people pose as sex workers and call me Nazi call me a Nazi so it's just like I don't I just feel like I have like one stop what are you, I have like one person that I feel like I can trust right now and I don't want to just like dump all of this on him constantly so yeah. I. I, th I feel like I need to like create that community for yeah. myself because it's really cool that, that that's something that you have, you know? Yeah. I feel very lucky. Uh, I feel very lucky to have that. I mean, it's been, a, it's definitely been a process of growth and, you know, um, being honest with people and it does take a little bit of vulnerability and there are some risks, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, like the payoff is worth it. The payoff of having people who, you know, actually care about you, who are actually invested in who you are and what you make and, and would, and do want to and will tell you when they think that you're wrong and they'll give you good reasons for it, not just careless reasons, you know, not just fucking random comments. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those things. And, uh, you know, again, like if you, you're getting into streaming, whether you decide to stream or not, um, you're in these spaces. So just know, like, I told you this before, but we've actually had a talk now. If you need to reach out and talk about something, if you need a second pair of eyes on something that's going on, if you've got, shit going on just ping me like uh, you have my discord now i'm most active on discord for reasons it's the imp code the imp code has has made me realize that discord is a much better place than twitter um but like but yeah you are 100 percent welcome to shoot shit my way and i'll give you timely feedback as much as i possibly can so just know that's the case um because uh, i fucking hate this shit and um again you like your story is uniquely uh, intense, I will say. But there's a lot of other femme presenting creators on this platform who've had a very similar experience to you, including myself to a certain degree. Um, people who, for some reason, you know, they just seem to always have a horde of people who are ready to scream at them about X thing and mischaracterize them. And it's, you know, it can be pretty fucking bad out there. So, yeah. yeah that's all I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, real quick, uh, we've been talking for a while. Uh, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to talk, touch on right away, but if not, uh, do you mind if I uh, bring you my little pup and and show you her talent and, and delight the stream yeah. because they'll love it? Yes. All right, let me go That's... get my pup real quick. I'll be right back. You cannot have pork chop. Stop. <laughs> No, my guy, you can't. No, 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 no. You're gonna have to chill. You're gonna have to chill. I'm sorry. I know. There we go. <laughs> Nobody wants me to give you pork chop. We can have... We have a Yoda here. Oh, Look, Lord. there's a Yoda. Hi, Yoda. There she is. See? She's a little sleepy right now. Hi. You want to feel the mood to sing? Sing when you're too sleepy. Ready? Yoda, let's sing. Let's sing a song together. Sing a song of beauty. You're very tone deaf, but you sing anyway. This is your chat's fault. Yeah. I love you, Yoda. You wanna hop up? Wanna hop up one more time? No? Okay. Alright, let's go. Okay, I can go. Good girl. <laughs> yep, that's my dog Yoda. She likes to sing a lot. She loves a... to sing. <laughs> that's 
So cute. She's tone deaf, of course. All dogs are. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, she likes to sing nonetheless. So, <laughs> well, uh, Merrick, thank you so very much for coming on. Um, uh, do you want to send do a little outro, plug your stuff, uh, tell people where they can find you? Um, I, I think my community really, really enjoyed uh, this opportunity to get to know you a little more and hear your story and talk about stuff. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for, for letting me come on. I, I do really appreciate that. It's It's been really frustrating not being able to talk about a lot of these things and not feeling like I have a place to. So I yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I mean, uh, then the, opportunity, the door is open. If you ever have shit you want to talk about, um, you know, I am super open to having people on. My viewers know I usually have a guest on a couple times a week. So if you ever have anything you want to talk about or whatever or, sh or shit you want to – you know, joke about, just let me know. We can, we can work something out. Yeah. Thank you. So. Thank you. Um, okay. So as far as places you can find me, you can find me on Twitter, unfortunately, at Merrick DeVille. And then um, I also have a YouTube channel, which I will eventually one day re-upload to. And that is um, also going to be Merrick DeVille on YouTube. And um, yeah, I think those are the two places that I'm at right now. Excellent. Well, we were very, very, very happy to have you on. Thank you so much for uh, being as open and vulnerable as you were telling that story because, it, you know, this is the, I think that people benefit a lot from hearing this sort of stuff when it happens so that we can make improvements. You know, we, you can't improve a space. You can't improve your own behavior if you don't know what the fuck is happening there in the first place. And fortunately, this is a pretty bad example of shit that can go wrong. But I appreciate you being willing to share it with us um, nonetheless. And holy shit. Oh, oh, they're aiming for a combo. We're getting a hug combo. Let's see how high we can get it. Chat, you can do better than seven. I know you can. We're getting – this is a what? Wait, which one is this one? This is not a hug combo. This is a different one. Oh, shit. They're going for it. They're going for it. Holy shit. Whoa. Hey, 14. Respectable. Respectable combo. Very good. Our highest record ever was, uh, was I think, 41, but that was a very special occasion. People were real hyped up for that. So <laughs> 14 is very what good. Is that? Oh, what on is my that? website chat, uh, there if, if people do the same emote at the same time um, with no interruption, it will automatically combine it into a combo, and it, it'll do like a blood splat every time you get to a new level. And uh, you got 14, which is like the, the first blood splat, so it's very good. That's a, that's a good thing. It means 14 people all put the same emote at the same time so that's well, great it's fantastic <laughs> um so yeah well again thank you so much for coming on we've plugged uh, your channel um and uh yeah well hopefully we'll see you around again soon um it was a, an absolute joy talking with you oh wait wait can i talk to you about um what is his name? The guy that I'm going to be uh, debating on Friday? Oh, yeah, Endernax. Later? Endernax was here in chat a little bit ago, actually, believe it or not. He came by. Um, no, sure, he... yeah, we can talk about Endernax a little bit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Endernax uh, is a... Um, how does he describe himself? Socially conservative, economically lefty... Not a Nosbol. He says he's not a Nosbol, and I do believe him. I don't think he's a Nosbol. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any problems with Jewish people. Um, he doesn't seem to have uh, a whole lot of like like any attachment to race realism or anything. Um, but uh, he does kind of believe in like Christian values and uh, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, uh, he he's very intense. I will say that much. Um, big, very, very much. A European conservative in America. I feel like we're I feel like we're starting to muddle the waters of what any of these things even mean anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had some nice conversations with him. I've had some uh, some rough conversations with him in the past. Um, I think there was a time where he called me uh, a, a derivative Vosh clone. And then I called him a two-bit fascist um, wh who wishes he could have a crumb of of Nick Fuentes' fame. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, so we, we've had some words. But we did have a really nice conversation um, talking about, like, his core values. And um, a lot of his – he does seem to be very principled. Um, and he has done, um, you know, some of the things that he claims he does. I don't actually – I've never talked to him about porn. Um 
though I have seen him tweet about it from time to time. Um, but yeah, he's very performative. So uh, that's not, I don't mean that in a bad way. I know that people sometimes take that as a negative, but he has a lot of, he has a lot of showmanship. Uh, wrapped himself an American flag one time. Uh, wrapped himself, <laughs> uh, ate a, ate a, a discount um, Chinese flag um, on stream once to prove how much he doesn't like the Chinese government. Um, it was not digestible or chewable, so he just kind of chewed on it for about an hour and then spat it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's the sort of stuff that uh, we do. Oh yeah, we that is the one thing. The one thing we support him in is he's attempted to debate Nick Fuentes because he thinks Nick Fuentes is a dishonest piece of shit, which I agree with. So we do support I'm... him. Um, oh, kid, he's going for the pork. Um, no. But yeah, he does. Uh, he we do want him to go up against Nick Fuentes. That would be fun. Um, but oh wait, yeah. I just want to get a clip of me saying, um, "Nick Fuentes, unblock me, you coward." Okay, there we go. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, he is a coward. Nick Fuentes that, is coward. a fucking coward. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, clip it. Um, yeah, uh, Endernax is 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 interesting. Um, he's very intense in his argumentative style. Um, I could probably send you some like of our previous debates if you wanted to like watch up on them for it. Um, but I yeah. know I've his YouTube and he doesn't argue on YouTube. So I didn't no, really get to see the way he makes arguments or interacts with other people, mm -hmm. yeah, which is what I'm curious to see. Yeah, I can send you some um I can send you some clips later uh if you just uh, if you remind me. I will, might forget cuz I I'm going to be streaming after this for a bit of a bit of time um still. But uh but yeah, um, I think Endernax is a, a good person um, at the end of the day. We have some very big disagreements. Um, again, I am not a social conservative. I don't believe there's et, like very much value in Catholic tradition or anything. But that's the position he comes from. Um, and yeah, I think you'll have a very interesting discussion. But again, um, one thing to know about, about debates on Twitch, like it or not, they're very performative. Don't be afraid to edge in to elbow your way in a little bit if you need to get a word in don't be afraid to err on the side of being more aggressive because uh people do get a little shouty people are more likely to be willing to interrupt um dylan's a pretty good mod um but nonetheless you know um these this debate space is kind of well known for being pretty content contentious so you know Ugh, i'm nervous i've never debated anyone before like I, I never even took debate in high school or anything so now i'm like really nervous for this oh, especially well, if this is something that he does is this what he does like he is a debater um i don't know he's been on a lot of debates i don't know if he i don't know how many one-on-one -on -one debates he does um but uh but he has to, i've been in a number of debates with him i've been in like geez i probably like five or six different debates debate panels with him in the past so he does do it relatively frequently i don't know if that's how he um you know i don't know if that's how he um brands himself or, or anything along those lines um but but yeah i mean he's, he's definitely got some experience with debate i can absolutely um give you some pointers and stuff um you know if you want to talk um let's see wait it's going to be on friday you said um, yeah, okay. Was... Yeah. So like, I don't know, maybe we could sit down and have a call tomorrow and we could talk about it if you want to. Um, and, uh, cause I, I'm more than happy to give some debate advice, but debate advice by and large is like a lot to, a lot to delve into on stream. Um, you know, uh, I would have, you know, my usual approach to debate. I am a debate person. I do a lot of debate. I do a fuckload of them. It's kind of my main thing. Um, but uh actually i don't know if it's my main thing anymore it used to be my main thing um oh fuck oh somebody broke the combo who broke the combo Shh. hey john i'm being attacked it's okay by your animals are all like swarming for the free food i i get it uh, so my, my dog yoda once stole a pizza she she uh jumped up and hit the pizza off the edge of the of the counter with her nose and it flopped onto the ground while we were uh while we were out like we were in the other room doing something ate the fucking pizza just gulped it so i know these animals they they want your food um but uh oh shit but yeah um when it comes to debate like the main thing you have to remember is that like um like public debate is rarely going to be about uh winning over your opponent necessarily you got to remember you're talking to an 
What's that? It's not about who you're talking to. It's about who's watching, right? Yeah, more or less. I mean, who you're talking to can be a, a gauge of like, of like, like it's important to know that shit. But at the end of the day, the goal is to make the most convincing case that you can to an audience that's going to be coming into this, probably not knowing a whole lot about you, your positions, or the other person in their positions. Dylan has a, a channel with a lot of debate on it. He has a lot of people who are fresh to a lot of political ideas, people who are curious for them. And I like that. Um, it's something that that's why I go on that show as frequently as I do. Um, because, uh, I think that there's like an opportunity to reach out to people and really teach people. So if you go in with that on, on mind and have some, um, you know, facts and figures and, and, and data that can support your case, do you know what the, do you know what the question is that you're debating? Yeah. He thinks that only fans shouldn't exist. Okay. Hmm. So I have to argue that it, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, so do you know um okay, so that's just a that's a pretty blanket question. Yeah. Damn. I have no idea what he might say to me. He was tweeting earlier today. Let me show you some really interesting things that this man was tweeting earlier oh, today. Oh shit. Also, not to interrupt you while you're looking for those, but our um out of context account has officially posted and tagged Nick Fuentes with your call out. Holy shit. Yes. Everyone <laughs> If there's ever been a tweet, I'm sorry to do this, but if there's ever been a tweet to retweet, it's this one. I'm going to give it to YouTube, too. Here you go. I'm going to give it to everyone. Here you are. This is the one. Here you go. Bloop. I'm going to send it to you, too, in case you want to fucking get that okay. out there. There you go, everyone. Enjoy. Enjoy. Okay. Here it is. Do you want, do you want to hear this ridiculousness? Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's see what he's got. You shouldn't be able to access pornography without making an account which verifies your age through a government registry. Ah, uh, yes. I love that. Incredible. My man's government registry porn access. Wow, <laughs> that definitely so won't be used in any horrendous, nightmarish ways. <laughs> uh, like, as... I mean, as a normal person, um, I'm, like, horrified. But as a sex worker, I'm, like, my skin is crawling just yeah, thinking about that. that's fucking horrifying to think about. Oh, okay. Holy nothing could shit. go wrong there. Yeah, nothing could, yeah, exactly. Uh, nothing, there's absolutely nothing could go wrong. Everything went wrong. Um, yeah, like, that could be approaching that and tearing that idea apart and, like, uh, like, um... You know, having some ideas prepared on like what could go wrong with that sort of thing, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's interesting because I, I have a feeling that what the way that he's going to go about it is probably going to be um, from the angle of like, oh, OnlyFans is like an exploitative corporation. But if he decides to go like the social control route of like, oh, you need to like, um, we need to have a government registry. There's so many fucking problems with that. Also, it, like, represents a incredibly unrealistic and almost hilarious anti-sex worldview. Like, the idea that, like, okay, so, like, there's this weird shit where, like, we talked about this the other day about how, like, um, like, conservatives love to, like, flip the fuck out if they find out, like, a teacher, like, had sex once or, like, has an OnlyFans or something. I'm like... Do you know how children are even made in the first place? Like, you do realize that children are made with sex, right? That sex happens and a child happens. That, like, for uh, for for most of fucking human civilization, like, your siblings would have been born in this... Like, they would have been conceived in the exact same room that you were sleeping in. Your parents would have fucked in the same room as you sleeping in. And then you would have had a new sibling. It's like, these people act like it's the stork. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they act like it's the fucking stork that does this. We have this incredibly cowardly, weird view about sex that, that people claim is, like, about protecting children. But it's like, wait a minute. All of those children who are there, parents had sex to have a child. That doesn't make them ill fit to be a parent. Sex is a real thing that happens, and we shouldn't treat it like this weird fucking radioactive thing that we flee from all the time. It's so ridiculous. Like, obviously, you don't fucking do sex two children obviously but sick but children know sex exists they know from like the age of like eight that sex exists and teaching them about that is fine letting them have their own access to their to, to fucking porn if the kid wants to what the fuck is that gonna do who fucking gives a shit kids like what 
Like, it's worse if you don't, because that leaves them open to fucking being predated on and not having the words to explain it. It's so fucked. It's such a fucked worldview. But anyway, I don't know. So I don't know what his angle is going to be. But I imagine, you know, I imagine he's going to go for a protect the children route because it almost always it, goes for yeah, protect the children. Yeah, it, it is. He says, also, if you're against this, you're a coomer and need to seek professional help for being more worried about kids not being able to get porn as easily than their mental health and stability. I mean, it, is this like, does he have like, is this going to be the whole thing where it's like, oh, um, like porn is like a corrupting influence? I'd love to see some, I would love to see some stats on that. I would love to see some research on that. This is literally, I just watched a two hour documentary about the banning of horror comics in America. This is the same shit. They were like, oh, uh, children read ho uh, horror comics and they become delinquents that was literally an argument they made that comic books made children delinquents and there was no evidence for it the the the, they never talked to any actual children. It was one guy who did all of the research and it was incredibly biased. It's amazing. I would love to see what his sources are on that. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling they might not be so good. I got a little bit of the, uh, oh man, I think there's a, it's just some, some John money shit going on in there. Ooh, not going to be real nice. No, he's not a fan of that one, but I bet the research he's pulling from was done by that fucking weirdo. Um, <laughs> Who is that? John Money? John Money, the like guy who ritualistically abused children in the name of uh, of understanding um, of like of like trying to figure out their psychology. Yeah, he like literally he did like extremely traumatic stuff. He forced a child like uh, in order to try and like make some experiment about um, like trans people. He oh, like no. forcibly transitioned a, a pair of twins to see how they would turn out. And uh, yeah, he was he was like infamous because of doing human experimentation. It was absolutely fucked. And this guy was like taken as like a serious expert for a very long period of time because he was basically the only one doing that type of research. So as a result, people with an agenda would cite his research as if it had any credibility, but it didn't. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm reading about this person right now. Yeah, John this Money's is... a piece of shit. Monster. Monster of a human. Yeah. But yeah, uh, he had a bunch of weird shit about porn too. Um, him and his cronies had a whole bunch of shit about that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, goddess trans girl. That's correct. It's Nazi scientist type shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So it's really, really, really fucked. Um, but yeah, that that sort of thing, um, that sort of thing can be, uh, it's really interesting to try and prod into where the information comes from that because, um, you know, it's weird and also just remember uh, just just remember he's a catholic mm -hmm. he's a catholic and he's going to try and argue that like porn is dangerous to children and then he's going to try and sidestep the fact that his church is objectively it's dangerous, pretty to, dangerous children. to children yeah, <laughs> fucking dangerously dangerous to children decades and centuries of child of ritual child abuse that is hidden that was hidden by the upper echelons of the church he doesn't have an alternative it's it's, it's stupid it's yeah. kind of crazy what happens to people when we take away sexual aids like pornography and force them to be celibate it's yeah. kind of weird it's almost like we already see have an example of that and it's catholic priests fucking children yeah yeah they use that take advantage of that power advantage it's really hard to tell it's really hard to say no to somebody who you believe is the voice of god it's really hard to say uh, no to somebody who has your entire life in their hands if that you want to future serving god that you have to do what they say mm, kind of weird yeah there's a lot of shit you could go into with that also the other thing too is like um there's another angle of it too which is just like wait but porn porn and and smut is art it is it is artistic expression and and if you don't believe that well you're just wrong look at like i mean fuck i could think of a hundred uh smut like smut pieces that are genuinely this incredible art off the top of my hand there are people who toil and put love into this shit just because it has sex in it it's this this is very dated viewpoint of like sex being inherently corrupt and i think that's sort of the op the um operation you know that's sort of the or sort of, that's the way they operate that's their the way their logic operates is to like sort of assume that everyone believes that sex is like an inherently corrupt and dirty thing but it isn't there's um there's even erotic um statue like in rome in the yeah. vatican they have erotic statues and erotic marble carvings yeah 
I mean, for sure. And it's, 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 yeah, it, the, I mean, fuck, it's just, it, I don't know, the Christian position on this is mega hypocritical in my opinion. But, um, you know, Catholics, I mean, Catholics do believe that, that sex has to be, uh, I believe it's two, there's two reasons that it has to be procreative or it has to be procreative and, um, edifying, I think is the term that they use, which is basically any sex that isn't designed to either, um, procreate. I mean, that's why they're largely against contraceptives as well, which is, I don't think he actually believed that, but I'm pretty sure the official Catholic church position is that they are against contraceptives. It's really fucked. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. fucked. I mean, it could be a really hard argument because you're ultimately going to end up in an argument against somebody who's going to be arguing their religious views. I find that to be a very difficult debate, but I would appeal to the fact that not like like in that sort of debate, I would say, well, not everyone has the same religious views as you. Not everyone thinks that God has forbidden anyone from having sex outside of a, like a marriage sanctified by the Catholic Church. Do you really think the entire world should be held to that sort of moral standard? Or, you know, oh. is that something that you should do in your little like, yeah. I was wondering, would it be inappropriate to bring it up in the opening statements that I think that what's going to happen between us is that we're just going to decide that we have different moral frameworks? Because, I mean, I already know that's what this is going to come down to. He doesn't, there's no way that he's going to be able to have any sort of logical argument that I'm not going to be able to pick apart. Yeah. So it's just no, going to come. I would say let him lay him out. You know what I mean? Because, like, the thing is, like, there's a time and a place to basically, like, go into the, go into the, like, go right into it like knocking down their arguments but usually it's better to let them like lay out their ca their claim and sort of give let them give you the rope with which you're going to uh okay you know, loop them up with let's say yeah um, not to tos anything um but yeah it, it can be tough like i don't know there's there's also the possibility he doesn't go the morality route knowing that that's just going to end up being kind of like a dead end and he might just go for like this um this sort of like idea of like, oh, well, OnlyFans is a, you know, an exploitative multi-level marketing corporation, some sort of shit like that. And oh, um, I, I totally destroy that already. Yeah. Like, I'm worried about that. Yeah, I, I know that a lot of people like I would I would not agree to a question where I had to defend specifically OnlyFans um, because like I don't care about corporations. But but the concept of porn, 100 percent, I would go I would go in for a conversation like that 100 percent. Um, I think that's probably what's going to end up happening is like, I don't care about OnlyFans as a plat uh, platform. I don't care about who runs it. Um, yeah. I don't care about reforms being made to it, but I do care about um, small creators having, being able to be in control of what they create and space away from studios, which is, which tend to be kind of abusive. Yeah. I think a lot of it's going to come down to whether you can make a convincing case to an audience that sex work is not harmful um, and you're going to have to overcome the Coomer thing because there's a lot of people who have that sort of, and I know, you know, this being a sex worker yourself, like, I know, you know, there's a lot of people who have this sort of inherent knee jerk, like, ah, uh, well, like, you know, sex is like being too sexy is not, is like bad. I mean, specifically when it's women being too sexy, but you know, um, you know, you know that like, I'm sure you know that that's like, a um, goes if, what if he does incel shit and goes for misogyny? Mm, I don't think I have a feeling he's not going to go that way. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't get that vibe from maybe. him. I don't think that's his personality. Maybe he will. I don't know. He might, he might do a lot of, they might do the, the, the gish gallop. I don't know. Like the thing is, I haven't had many substantive debates with, um, with Endernax. Most of them have been derailed into like, um, what I consider to be like largely like gish, gish galloping and like performativity. Um, but what since is it's gish a, gallop? a gish gallop is like when somebody comes in and they spit out, they spit out so many like points that you can't possibly address all of them in the time limit. The point is to like, is to basically like the moment that you get, that you start talking in depth about one point, you pivot to another point, you pivot to another point, you pivot to another point and you never, you never actually talk on them. So like if I came in and I was like, here, we're going to debate about only fans. I would be, if I was going to be a gish galloper, I would come in and I would go, all right, so here's my case. OnlyFans is a company that enables child pred predation. It is a, a company that reinforces misogynist stereotypes. They exploit their workers by plugging them into a, a uh, multi-level marketing campaign. They play into um, into elements that corrupt our children and our youth. They uh, target children as, an, as a demographic. Basically say like a hundred inflammatory things. No, some of which might be true, some of which might be false, but they're going to throw out a million of them. And then I... I and the way that you beat a, a like if a gish galloping thing is you you have to take control of the conversation and make them talk about them one by one because chances are they don't have any depth to them. 
Um, and, or you could cut through it entirely if they're really gish galloping, like you get with like anti-communist people where they come and they go, yeah, but what about Vuvuzela? What about North Korea? What about China? And then you go like with the what, what about isms, you just say, okay, listen, I'm not here to fucking talk about China, Venezuela, blah, blah, blah. What is your actual opinion? And what do you actually know about communism? Because I'm talking about here. I live in America. That's what we're talking about here. And then they usually don't have an answer because they were prepared to just say, what about Vuvuzela? What about China, whatever. And they never actually thought about it. They just have like this sort of like hatred for what they think communism is. And um, mm. the, that is a common tactic you'll see on stuff like this. I don't know if, I don't know what his intent is. Um, he might go in with like a real strong, with like some kind of a case. I don't know what type of a case can be made against porn. Like, I feel like that's a really, um, like a really well beaten down um, position. Like, I feel like you have a lot of data and evidence on your side that you could pull on if you so desired. But I, but again, that's hard for me to say. We can, again, we can talk about this um, if you want to. Like, we can do like a, I could give you a little coaching session as somebody who's done a fuckload of debate. And we can even talk about like, um, you know, some videos that I've, I've done in the past that have been, um, you know, that have been pretty good examples of the type of tactics you'll come up against uh, with the right on social issues. A lot of times on social issues, at the end of the day, they hope to make an emotional argument to the audience that feels good enough. You know, make the audience feel like, yeah, you're a coomer if you like porn and you're like, you know, you're a degenerate and like you, you should be ashamed. You should be fucking your wife. Right. And then the people in the audience go, oh, shit. And they like fall on those like emotional ground in stereotypes in our society. That's what a lot of the rights like social conservatism arguments are. It's about like playing on pre-existing guilt and um, not actually the facts of the situation. And I think a lot of times you can diffuse that by cutting through and just saying, well, wait a minute, but we have evidence that shows that porn does not do that. And even more so, here's some alternatives. You know what I mean? Like, here's yeah. some other things to consider. And um, like, you know, if that's the case, like, uh, it's funny, like, it's funny that, you know, I'm pretty sure he's like a Second Amendment guy too. So you could just be like, well, yeah, if you want to ban porn because of potential harm, well, fucking guns. I guess you can't be a second amendment one you know like so that's what, that's what my husband was saying um he because we were talking about this earlier and he was like wait a minute just use gun arguments against him yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay yeah. probably a good idea can you imagine being like i'm really worried about porn because i'm worried about the harm that it'll do to children mm -hmm. and i could be like you know what does harm to children a bullet in their face so if you're worried about people having to be on a registry to consume porn i guess anyone who has a gun should probably be on a registry too i feel like so far i feel like you could be like children can be mauled to death by dogs so i guess if you own a dog you should be on a government registry like registry. I, I just like if, if you're gonna take that from the the, the argument of uh porn damages yeah. children somehow if they accidentally see it yeah, I mean, and, and here's the other thing, too. Another thing you can point out, um, which is that, um, like, uh, a government registry is, like, historically a rotten-ass idea. So, like, if he goes to stick with that one, um, which he might, because it does seem to be part of his belief, you can always point out that, like, hey, just so you know, um, like, there's literally at, at least 100 years of history of, um, e like, very, very violent regimes, like Nazi Germany, like um fuck uh like fucking pinochet's chile like that have used uh that have used like registries of homosexual people um which is intrinsically that's a list of your sexuality that's the exact same thing you're talking about here you're talking about having to register in a registry that's going to tell people what website you're allowed to go on they're going to the government will know if you're um y you know they're going to know if you're going on and signing up for a gay porn site. Are you really okay with the government being able to target people based on their sexuality? What happens if our next president is like, like, uh, like thinks that all like foot fetishists or whatever are, are degenerates and need to be killed. Well, guess what? Endernax, your foot fetish has just got you landed in a concentration camp. Hope you like that. It's a really fucking bad setup. I that you brought up the foot fetish thing too. Cause then it's like, okay, well, if you have to be on a government registry to watch porn, then do people have to be on a government registry to see feet? Because yeah. you never know if it's a foot fetish. Yeah, you don't know what's sexualized. You know, this becomes yeah. it becomes the government's job to determine what is what what's is sex fetish? and what isn't and what's a fetish. Yeah, exactly. And then you have There's the whole problem fun. of like, 
what are you going to end up like in Japan where like there's like these censorship laws where you have to blur you have to put a tiny thin technically every image has to has a tiny thin blur like this is ridiculous it's absurd well he's not a small government though he's not a small government type like he advocates for he advocates for like a catholic government i think so it's like oof okay um, I can make the argument that there's men who are sexually aroused and sexually attracted to women popping balloons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I, yeah. Can you stop? <laughs> what a cutie. Fighting me for attention. Yeah. Being a bot. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. I should, I, wait, what is vor? Vor? Vor is, uh, like, uh, it's a kink in which people, um, get eaten. Like, like whole, usually. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And there's various types. There's um, there's uh, what's it called? Let's see here. There's fulvor, I think it's called, or something along those lines, where someone is like literally eaten, swallowed, and then digested. Which that's the like the super edgy shit. Then there's like, oh, this is just an image of like a little fairy person being put into like a giant's mouth or something like that. There's oh yeah, there's um, uh, reverse. What's it called? No, it's called unbirthing. That's like genital related vor i don't think i can, actually i don't know how much i can actually say holy shit i gotta be careful about the I, tos on that wait i'm on youtube i don't know anyway whatever <laughs> horny jail for all of you i should know about this why do you know this but i don't oh i have my i have my reasons um <laughs> yeah i i've I, no. listen I, I i'm i'm not too far off from your profession in 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 a past life um uh -huh. so yeah don't uh salute from one uh one one i don't know if it's fair to call myself an ex-sex worker but i worked in a very you know similar field so yeah okay that's yeah. cool that's all cool uh yeah people have been people have been trying to find it but they never will you'll never find it you motherfuckers <laughs> um yeah there's some weird there's there, oh somebody says somebody talking about vor has summoned me yeah all right i know we got some vor people in chat. it's surprisingly <laughs> common there's a lot of kinks that people don't think are common that are actually surprisingly common no, I didn't. Um, I did, though. Well, listen, I can't give away too much information, but you'll find it. Somewhere, maybe. <laughs> listen, I may or I may or may not have been very influential in a very in a very per, in a very particular piece of uh, famous war art. OK, there you go. Um, yeah, there you go. That's all the hints you're getting today. Um, don't Google image search Sudafon. Yeah, my partner does a lot of sex drawings. So there you go. Um, yeah. Porn, yeah my... porn mod, porn mod. Mm, no, I'm getting closer, though um was i an attack on titan artist no but that is that is i'm sure attack on titan is one that is awakened a kink in a lot of people that that show has a lot of people getting eaten and swallowed whole so there you go um but yeah so yeah let's talk um we can we can chit chat tomorrow before you uh go for your debate we can talk about some tactics maybe if you have the time we can review a few vods or whatever i'll give you some some coaching and gassing up for your first big debate because uh that's kind of my that's you're you're coming into the area of my expertise so doing the panel scene and the debates and all this shit so yeah um but yeah thank you so much for coming on and um let's talk again if, if you're cool with that yeah yeah thank right. you i really appreciate it absolutely of course it's been absolutely wonderful have a wonderful night merrick thank you you too bye good night Yo, that was great. Was that not great? Was that not fantastic, huh?